creativity, collaborations, and communication skills. So the program participants were the 10 greatest aged 16 years old, and they are from secondary rural school. And they also, these students were award a certificate of participation after the completion of the program. This program, uh, this student also was referred as a mentee in this outreach program. About the mentors, the mentors uh, consist of the pre-service and in-service teachers. The pre-service teacher was secondary, uh, was second and third year undergraduates age 20 and 23, training in physics and mathematics education. Why in service teachers were qualified teachers with degree in science and social science education who were undertaking the master course at that time. Both group of teachers were were asked to attend a one-day training course in peer mentoring to provide guidance, uh, support, and assistance to the mentees. They also was taught the assessment skill on the activities. The teachers were awarded award, a certificate of appreciation by the faculty after the completion of their mentor role. The university school partnership model uh, and that from Bernard 2000, 2002 to carry out the mentor mentee program. In this model, a learning community uh, was created to draw the expertise from the university lecturers and student teachers in call constructing the mentor mentee program. Uh, with the school teachers and students and the parents. A range of the benefits uh, gained from this model in terms of mentoring, transportation, recruitment, and funding. And this is the uh, role played by the university and the school. The university help in developing the STEM activities and the scoring rubrics and set the fun, provide the free transportation to the school, whereas the school provide the school facilities and the participants and also grant the parent the concerns from the parents for, to allow their children to join the program during the weekend. Uh, these are the details of the resources, funding and the partners involved in this model. The school principal heads of the science department uh, help in arrange the school hall and the public access system for the student to carry out the STEM activities and the university provide the free bus service to transport the mentors and the materials to the school. Uh, the university also allocate a um, ratio ring it 50 ring to each master student to run the program outside the classroom. This money were used to buy the materials and the equipment. Why in service teacher? play their role in borrowing the science apparatus from their school repository for use in the STEM activities. They also sought a sponsorship from the local communities such as the businessmen to support the cost for the food and the drink. And also they helped to collect the recycled materials which were the main resources for the activities. The in-service teacher also serve as a mentor to guide the student in during the activity during the program. Uh, for the pre-service teachers, they help in collecting the recycled materials and also serve as a mentor in the program. 
this is the details about the implementation of the program. Throughout the year 2015 and 2019, a total of 16 schools involved in the program, which are situated 16 to 216 kilometers from the university. A total of 732 students and 99 pre-service teachers and 342 in-service teachers in work, were involved in this program. For the purposes of uh, communications, uh, the free messaging uh, platforms such as Telegram and WhatsApp were used to ease the communication between the mentors, the program coordinator and the school teachers. The engineering design process were used to guide the implementations of the STEM activities. First, the mentee were arranged in group of four or five to collaborate and to address an ill-defined problem with the context of their daily life. And brainstorming were carried out to identify the problems and the solutions. But these were guided by the open-ended questions in terms of worship. And also, students were developing and constructing the solution in forms of product, a prototype yeah, in the following step. Lastly, the student uh, will be presenting and testing the prototype in front of their peers and the mentors as evaluators. So the aspect that were evaluated are the prototypes, the STEM concepts, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, communication skill, and collaboration through the rubric, the scoring rubric provided. One example of an ill-defined problem embedded in the STEM activity was uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, Christina observed one bird was perched on the branch of a tree. One question raised in her mind, how can this bird perch for such a long time? So the students were assigned the task to create a balancing toy that can stand stability on their fingers like a bird. Each student must produce at least one prototype. Uh, okay, these are the outcomes of the activities for this ill-defined uh, problems. Students were happily shows the bear, their balancing uh, toys that have produced during the program. Higher order thinking questions were also created for the student to answer. Some of the hot questions were, in your opinion, if the building were construct identical to this prototype, is, is it? said to be inhabited? If yes or no, please explain why. So this question is categorized as an evaluation. This is to evaluate the student critical thinking skills. So for the monitoring and evaluation expect, uh, there were multiple qualitative and quantitative uh, quant qualitative uh, means was used uh, during the monitoring and evaluation. This involved the focus group observation, focus group interviews, mental few notes, open-ended questions, and scoring rubric for prototype sketch and the presentations. For the data analysis, the mental view notes and the mentees respond to the open-ended questions were analyzed using the thematic analysis. The thematic analysis is a form of pattern recognition technique by searching through the data for emerging themes. 
So these are the results of the study. From this uh, main STEM mental mentee program, students were able to use their scientific knowledge to solve the daily life problems given. They also able to connect the STEM activities with their daily lives and the scientific concepts learned from their class. It was also found that the higher order thinking questions uh, were a challenge for the student and spark their critical thinking. And students also admit that uh, designing and building something new and practical from this program. Students also were able to think creatively through the combinations of the ideas from their group members. And also, uh, students admit that uh, sketching, designing, and constructing models foster their creative thinking and problem solving skills. Through the thing work, uh, the student admit that it was uh, able to instill their thinking and also solve problems with a determined effort since the student have to try many times to get the, their prototype done. There were also constraints uh, found during the extend programs. The constraint were the time or the time constraint for the student to design and create three prototypes in one program. So the action taken to overcome this problem were um, STEM activities have been reduced to, from three to two activities in the follow-up program. So for the sustainable, sustainability of the program, the program has been expanded to four primary rural schools throughout the year 2019 and 2021. Postgraduate will empower to reach out the STEM to rural schools in East Coast of Sabah. And also entrepreneurial uh, thinking skills were introduced to the program so that the students could apply their skill in addressing localized problems and turning the problems into a marketable product. In order to ensure the program remains relevant in the new norms from COVID pandemic, hybrid project-based learning was implemented in the three primary schools. In which first to, uh, Online platform were used for the student to discuss the problem and the solutions, whereas the student meet face to face to them to construct their prototype. Uh, so the high the portion highlighted in green is is was the area was the location in which uh, the program has been expanded to the primary school. Initially, it was conducted in the East Coast of Sabah. So the for the concluding uh, remarks, the STEM Mental Mentee Outreach Program has executed a new idea which address a specific challenge of revitalizing STEM movement in rural school in Sabah and add values to the rural school students, teachers, and the university. The university uh, school partnership model was able to reach out to rural school students to improve their 21st century skill and make it more relevant to their local context. And these are the activities uh, carried out by the students during the program. Uh, from here, we can see that the students and the mentees and the mentors were discussing um, about the solutions before they start constructing uh, the prototype. And this one shows that the students were presenting their sketch in front of the uh, mentors. And in the middle one, students were uh, presenting the prototype in front of the evaluators and 
And at the bottom one, students in teams of four and five to construct their uh, prototypes. And there is on the uh, left side, the students were testing their prototype in front of the radio too. And uh, uh, above one, the students were testing their prototype uh, in a pond in, in the school. So that's all from my, my presentations. Thank you for listening. Thanks, uh, Niet, for this nice presentation. Uh, so sorry I was not able till now to visit your your region, but I visited Sarawak, uh, Borneo, near, near Sabah. It's uh, another state in Borneo, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, I hope so. After pandemic time, I will be able to visit Sabah. <laughs> Thank you. But you're welcome Ob to come. Obviously, to obviously, in case if I will receive an invitation from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks again. Colleagues, please, uh, now we have uh, six uh, minutes for questions and maybe a short discussion. <clears throat> it's really nice. Uh, uh, just my first question, if possible. Uh, we do not see you. Can you can you turn your camera? Turn camera on, please. Uh, you mentioned primary schools. Uh, can you explain shortly what do you mean by primary school in your case? Uh, primary uh, how... Sorry. Sorry. A primary school is the uh, lower form of school for the student age uh, six to twelve years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have some other questions? Uh, pa my pardon. No, I, I am asking colleagues. Maybe somebody has some question. I do not see in, uh, in, in conversation. So thank you, Chairman, for your... Okay, we are, we are waiting <laughs> some questions. We have no, time. We okay, have time. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, no other questions. Uh, do we have another presenter? Maybe not yet, but I uh, was informed by another program that it's it should be connected from South Africa. University of South Africa. Good day. Oh, finally, because you asked about time, I sent via email, via Gmail, a link once again. But we see you here. Please, can you introduce yourself and you can start with your presentation. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me, before I introduce myself, let me quickly share my slide. Uh, we do not see you. Can you turn your camera turn on? OK, no, I, I'll do that shortly. Just give me a second. Uh, can you see my screen? 
not, not yet. yet. Okay. But we hope so to see you at somehow. Yes. No, you'll also see me. Can you see the screen now? We are waiting, waiting, waiting. Not yet. Do you see anything? Or is oh, there... now it's it's correct. Can you switch to full mode? Let me do the full view. Yeah, full view. Okay. Still loading. What is, the the what, what is the temperature in South Africa right now? The temperature is 18 degrees. It's very cold. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Perfect. No, it's very cold. 18 is very cold. I'm feeling cold. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Because on my side is very blank. Not yet. It's it's we are waiting. Okay. Full view, but not. I don't know what could be the problem. But you can start uh, with this mode, no problem, I think. OK, so this one is fine, right? Yeah. OK, uh, let me show my face since. Uh, yeah. Can you see my face or not yet? No, I see myself. What what my face? Maybe it will come through. Yes, here we go. Now we see you, now but see not you your but presentation. presentation. Okay. Here's my presentation. Can you see it now? It's OK. OK, um, good day, uh, colleagues, once again. Uh, firstly, I would like to apologize for the delay that I might have caused on your side uh, because I thought it is one o'clock uh, South African time. And at this moment in South Africa is 12 o'clock. So my sincere apologies in that regard. Okay, my name is uh, Letas Kosana. I'm a student uh, pursuing a PhD uh, in environmental education at the University of South Africa under the supervision of Prof. Awelani V. Mudawu. I'm also a lecturer um, under the Department of Science and Technology Education uh, within the College of Education at the University of South Africa. Uh, with uh, my focus area being uh, environmental education. So what I'm going to present for you today, um, it's mainly the, the study, which is uh, what I'm pursuing at this moment as part of my PhD study. So with this study, um, the title of, uh, of my study is the development and the implementation of the Sustainable Intervention Strategies for Solid Waste Management in Schools. So this study, um, uh, I think it's important to highlight the specialization, as I've indicated that it is an um, environmental education. So this study, it will be conducted in South Africa, 
and South Africa has provinces, so I chose uh, to conduct it in Bumalanga province. And the Bumalanga province, or all the provinces in South Africa, they also have districts as well as municipalities. So this study will be conducted in Bumalanga province and Gangala district. And the context of this study, it will be mainly in primary schools. So if you can check my second slide, uh, the second slide, uh, it, it clearly stipulates the interest of this study to say that this study it is based on um, the anecdotal evidence because as a researcher, when I was a teacher, uh, attending workshops or visiting other schools to have content workshops there or for sports or for any other activities or any extracurriculum activities, I would observe that there are some schools and some classrooms within the district which are polluted with solid waste and seeing those schools polluted with so much solid waste you'll realize that there are either no uh, waste management uh, initiatives that are implemented or even though they are there some of them are minimal as a result you have, or if, if you can look at these figures that I have here, you can see that uh, in 2019, South Africa has close to 20,000 schools, close to 399,000 teachers with 12 million learners in public schools. And when you look at these figures, you can see that these figures are alarming in a view or in effect that one can think of the amount of waste that is known to be produced by schools. And looking at these figures, you can see that the amount of waste that is being produced by school is enormous, meaning that it is too much. And also, some schools uh, in Gangala district, they will be polluted with solid waste that they have generated, and they will... Uh, um, generate a large amount of waste which will be waste such as paper glass plastics i mean plastics etc as a result another problem uh, that, that i have identified is that there is also um, a voluntary approach rather than a compulsory approach that are implemented in schools in relations to managing the waste that they have uh, 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 generated in relations to having these initiatives being implemented in these schools. For instance, uh, it, it's more like schools themselves, they decide on their own whether they want to have waste management initiatives uh, implemented in their schools or not. These initiatives are not compulsory. As a result, since they are not compulsory, it means that the schools themselves, they get to decide whether they want to manage waste, uh, I mean, whether they want to have waste management initiatives implemented in their schools or not. And again, if you can uh, uh, take into consideration the global outbreak of coronavirus pandemic. It has also contributed in a negative way, especially in, in waste that is generated in schools, because you the, the, we now have um, additional waste that is there within the school premises, such as surgical masks, uh, face shields, and gloves, which you'll find them within the school environment. And the most dangerous part or alarming factor is that this waste, they do not dispose it uh, effectively. And also, this study is guided uh, by, by, by the, the need to develop and implement the sustainable intervention strategy for solid waste. Uh, management for schools that are I mean, for schools that are situated in Gangala District, um, Bumalanga Province. So, with with uh, this main research question, I am hoping to answer or to find solutions to the following research questions, such as why do stakeholders in schools shape the solid waste management practices the way they do? What are the opportunities as well as challenges? 
in developing, not in designing, in developing and implementation of the sustainable intervention strategies to manage solid waste in schools. And also, how does the sustainable intervention strategy shape the, the management of solid waste? Let me move to my next slide. So the aim of the study, as I've already indicated, uh, it is to develop and to implement uh, sustainable intervention strategies for solid waste management in schools that are located in Gangala district, Mpumalanga province. And the objectives, uh, it is to understand the views and the reasons of stakeholders in how they shape the management of solid waste in schools. So when I talk about stakeholders, I'm bringing in people like uh, school governing bodies who are with in the, the, the school environment itself and to also identify the opportunities and challenges in developing and implementing the sustainable intervention strategies and again to explain the impact um, of the intervention uh, strategy that will be implemented in relation to the management of solid waste. So again uh, at this present moment I'm currently busy with the uh, the, the, the theoretical and conceptual framework whereby I decided to adopt a social constructivism theoretical framework. So with this uh, theoretical framework, what I'm hoping to do or what I am busy doing at this moment is to develop my own conceptual framework through the social constructivism uh, theoretical uh, framework. Then uh, on my legs, on my next slide, um, it, it, it provides the summary of the research methodology where you can see here on number one that uh, I have adopted uh, the interpretative research paradigm and also uh, the research method that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a qualitative research method and the research design. It will be a multiple case study um, design with the context of the study being in Gangala district schools and uh, participants will be um, a sample purposefully whereby the participants of this study will be learners, teachers, uh, school principals and the school governing body as well as the general workers. So in order for me to be able to collect data, I am going to collect data through observations, interviews, uh, focus groups, interviews as well as a diary. So it is important for me to indicate that when it comes to data collection process, this data, it will be collected in two stages uh, whereby I'm going to have phase one as well as phase two. So I'll explain that on my next slides. Then the rigor of the study, it will be ensured through triangulation as well as uh, conducting a pilot study. Then with ethical considerations uh, I have already got an ethical clearance certificate from the University of South Africa so now in order for me to get I um, mean to conduct my pilot study I need to go and seek approval from the gatekeepers as well as get uh, the participants uh, consent form and then on my next slide this is the research context so here it, it clearly stipulates the more, something more like a flow chart to say that this study will be conducted in South Africa, uh, which province, uh, which is Mpumalanga province. And under Mpumalanga province, um, it, there is district, which uh, I'm going to focus on Gangala district. And Gangala district has the following municipalities, uh, which is Tembisile Hani, Dr. J. S. Muroka, as well as Emala Hleni. Then in within Tembisile Hani, I've chosen um, a circuit. I've chosen a Kwakafondain East circuit. And within Dr. J. S. Muroka, I have chosen Siabuswa circuit. And within Emala Hleni local municipality, I chose with Bank 3 circuit, whereby this study will be situated. And I have identified uh, the intermediate phase. So it, it is important to also acknowledge that in, in primary schools, there are phases. You'll find early childhood development, you'll find a foundation phase, you'll also find an intermediate phase. So this study, um, when I talk about intermediate phase, I'm referring to uh, the, the learners uh, who are in grade four to, to, to six. 
uh, that is an intermediate phase. So here, uh, this figure uh, stipulates the map of Mpumalanga, as I've indicated already with these red arrows. Here, uh, it is Dr. J.S. Muroka and Tembisili Han, as well as uh, Emalacheni Local Municipality. Then, um, the selection criteria that I'm going to use, uh, as I've indicated earlier on, that this study, it must be in Bumalanga province, uh, Gangala district, under these three local municipalities, as well as the selected intermediate phase schools, they should be situated in uh, Kohafundain East and Siabusa, as well as uh, Whitbank Circuit. Then, uh, the three intermediate phase schools, they must be in quintile one, quintile two, as well as quintile three. So the schools that are classified under those uh, quintiles are non-fee paying schools. And I've chosen those quintiles again because uh, uh, based on anecdotal evidence, uh, when, I, when I was doing my master's, it was much easier to get access to conduct research in these three quintiles than in quintile four and also in quintile five. Then the school must also have a principal and not a deputy principal or not uh, any acting principals. And the school must have an SGB representative as well as a general worker. And the teachers who are going to be participants, they must be teachers who are teaching in intermediate phase, which is grade four and grade six. And these learners, they must be in the intermediate phase, which is grade four to six. Then on my next slide, it contains the sample size of this study whereby I've already indicated or, or showed you the location or the context of the study. So the sample size uh, within this population of participants, uh, for learners it will be uh, 10 learners in quintile one, two teachers, one principal, one SGP and one general worker. So this sample size, it is equal across all quintiles or across all the schools where this study uh, it, it will be conducted. Then on my next slide, it is data collection techniques. As I've indicated earlier on to say that this study will be conducted in two phases, which is uh, phase one as well as phase two through same structured interviews, uh, focus group interviews, as well as observation and the use of diary. So the data will be analyzed through an I mean, typology approach whereby it will be analyzed closely using themes, code and categories that will emerge uh, in this study. And uh, it is uh, also imperative for me to indicate that this study will be uh, it will not be a comparative study. As a result, each case they will be interpreted uh, as a single case. Then on the next slide, uh, it's just mainly a process that I am going to follow when it comes to the issue of transcribing and presenting my data. I have outlined uh, six steps, whereby step one, I'll collect data from the participants through observations, interview and focus groups interviews. Step two, watch videos repeatedly or listen to the audio. Step three, uh, it will just uh, involve the step of transcribing data. Uh, that was collected through video and audio recorder. I'll also make sure that I replay the video and audio recorder to check the accuracy of the transcribed data and present the transcribed data as themes for data analysis. And the last one it will be data analysis and interpretation. So in conclusion, uh, yeah, in conclusion, uh, this that will simply develop and implement uh, sustainable intervention strategies for solid waste management uh, in schools that are situated in Gangala district. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. <laughs> Um, good presentation. Good presentation. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Yeah. yeah.
Uh, what about, what about uh, some uh, practical, practical results? results? What results, results, results do you results expect, you expect from, your research? from your research? Thank you very much for the question. Well, at this moment, uh, when it comes to the expectation of the results, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know the results that I, I'm going to get from the study that I'm going to conduct because me uh, myself at this moment, I, I honestly don't have any answers to, to the research questions that, uh, uh, that I have at, at this moment. I don't know the strategy that I'm going to develop at this moment. So everything, uh, it will unfold as time goes on. I believe that once I have collected the data, uh, that's when I'll know exactly the results that I have uh, managed to get from, from the study itself. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Angela, Angela, do you want to ask? I can't join. Oh, please stop sharing your screen. Okay. Oh, it's okay now. Uh, uh, one more question because we, uh, because we have time. Uh, you have mentioned uh, some focus group <coughs> focus groups methodology. If I understood well, you are going to to form uh, some focus groups, right? Yes. And to perform a group uh, a group interview. Uh, yes. Can you explain explain shortly procedure how it, you are planning to do this? OK, thank you for the question. Uh, with regards to the focus group interviews, they are going to be conducted with uh, the, 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 the learners only whom are in uh, the intermediate phase. Not all the participants are going to be engaged um, in the focus group interviews. So these focus groups interviews, they, they will only take place after the observation process. So I am not going to conduct them before the observation because um, the main reason I'm, 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 I'm avoiding conducting uh, the focus group before the observation is because I feel like uh, the participants will uh, change the way they do things or their behavior because they now already know what exactly the, uh, I, I'll, I'll be asking them or what is it that I'm looking for. So I'll start by conducting the observations with the learners. Then after that, that's when I can bring in um, the, um, the focus group interviews. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I see Mohamed uh, wants to ask. Uh, hi, Leta. Thank you uh, very much for a good presentation. I have a question uh, about uh, uh, Africa, uh, African studies. Uh, this study is related to solid investment. Uh, I saw many African studies. Uh, why is location, uh, name of city or uh, province given in the South African studies? Is there any special reason for this? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mohammed, for for the question. Yes, there there is a specific reason why I gave or I have outlined um, the the location of the study. Uh, the main reason um, I did that is because um, it, I, I want um, my examiners to 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 be in a situation whereby. They, they, they know exactly the setting of the study. And the main reason I decided to choose the, the location that I have chosen, it is because uh, of, of accessibility purposes. Sometimes examiners, they tend to ask questions to say that, okay, fine, you have conducted this study, but 
where exactly is this study taking place? So I believe that uh, giving out the location of where the study is, uh, it allows them to 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 be uh, or to picture themselves in the same environment. It's more like you are giving someone a direction to say, if you want to go to this place, you simply go through this way. So I believe that uh, if 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 I do have the the allocation, which I mean the location which serves as a context of the study, it is also imperative. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for a good answer. OK, um, can I ask a question now? Yes. OK. Can you you can hear me? Later. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. OK, thank you. It, it is actually so encouraging to hear and, and um, to listen to your presentation. And, and obviously, with regard to the whole issue of sustainability and looking at um, recycling and uh, at schools and the whole aspect of upcycling, I'm just wondering to what extent could you be including all of that as well so that your work is not just um, a collection of information for the, for the sake of information, but what, what types of action um, is going to be there for the constructive and enhancement of communities as well? Thank you. OK, thank you very much uh, for the question. OK, to answer your question, uh, I, I, uh, what I did uh, with regards to this study, I've started by reviewing the, the initiatives that uh, have been implemented, for instance, uh, recycling, reusing and reusing that have been implemented in certain schools so that I can be able to identify the gap. And with regards to that, to ensure uh, education for sustainable development, I've picked up that some of these initiatives that are there or which are already implemented uh, in certain schools, they, they they, they, they don't um they don't they, they're not sustainable in a manner that they don't continue for a very long time because um some schools will just do it maybe on the a world environmental day and that's it so with me developing this strategy uh, uh, it will not mainly focus on uh, what is already there, but what is already there will be used as a foundation or as a basis so that I can be able to develop the, 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 the strategy. And the strategy will be developed uh, according to the needs that uh, the school where the data will be collected um, will be. I, I think I have answered, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have answered your question. Thank you. You are allowed Thank to probe. Yeah, no, you, you absolutely have. And I'm just wondering to what extent have you included entrepreneurial activities and innovative type of um, aspects for the children mainly, you know, in terms of project based learning? Obviously, you're not going to go into project based learning, but that's where the rest of, or the teachers within the school could be enhanced in terms of what does that entail? Thanks. Thank you very much. No, yes, uh, when I was reviewing literature, uh, I, I did include uh, some of um, entrepreneurial aspects. And uh, again, when it comes to the development of the strategy, uh, it was also included there. And uh, I'll definitely consider some of these uh, uh, important aspects that you have highlighted. I believe that they will also assist in the, the development process. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks. Uh, please, uh, more questions, colleagues. or just share some ideas, uh, maybe some. I do not, I do not see some other questions. Oh, OK, in this case, my question. Uh, is it your, I mean, uh, uh, 
is this your full scope for your PhD research, or are you planning to 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 make to do some some more research? Um, what do you mean uh, when you say it is a full scope? Uh, I mean that uh, because usually uh, uh, PhD students are planning, let's say, how uh, how large, how big this research should be, or, or how many studies uh, he or she should conduct in order to be to defend uh, thesis, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, is it full your planning or not? Yes, it is. And uh, however, this study is still developing. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, it is still developing. It's, it's still in the development uh, process. So I'll see uh, how far it, it goes. But uh, with that, um, I believe that. Uh, no, I think I'll, I'll just say that. OK, yes. uh, can you check uh, conversation window? We have another question for you. Why are you doing the study? This is a question. OK, I can see the question to say why am I doing the study? OK, the main reason I am doing the study, as I've indicated before or on few of my slide, it is because uh, I saw a gap or I saw a need to to come up uh, with new strategies uh, that could assist in managing the enormous waste that, that schools are producing uh, themselves so this study uh, it it will contribute uh, to 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 the field of academia it it will contribute in terms of assisting the upcoming researchers with um, with data or with uh, more information so that um, they can be able to make inferences or refer to it so the main reason i'm doing to i mean i'm doing this study is not only uh, to develop uh, the strategy for schools but to have a positive impact or to produce or or to have a positive impact in the field of academia uh, and to come up with information that uh, the upcoming researchers or, uh, or academics will use uh, for future research purposes. Oh, we, we hear some dogs around, is it correct? Yes, I have dogs around. <laughs> How many? <laughs> they are three. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Please invite them to a listen symposium. Uh, no, okay, I'm next, next question for you. Oh, next question. I can see it here on the comment section to say how can we uh, with I mean how can we work with the reduction of waste at the source as well? OK, um, how can we work with the reduction of waste? Uh, I'm trying to understand within the context of uh, the school environment or across. Yes. No, no, within within the context of your work, because it's not just about how much waste is accumulated. How can yes. we reduce it before it gets to be accumulated? How Thanks. can we? OK, no. Um, Within the scope of my work, uh, at this moment, I, I don't have answers because um, what I'm going to answer now, it is based on my observations of, of what I have seen to say that other schools, uh, what do they do when, they, when it comes to, to the reduction of waste? They simply ban down all the waste that has been generated. So according to them, it is the best strategy that they use um, to reduce the amount of waste that they produce, of which is a negative, uh, it serves as a negative impact uh, on the environment. So with me uh, conducting this study, I'm coming, I'm trying to come up with solutions that will assist to, to, to move away or to shy away from uh, reducing the waste the way they do at this present moment. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, just a uh, uh, short information from uh, uh, I also uh, following Facebook. Uh, everything is on the progress and uh, we have some 
some uh, uh, nice word, uh, some compliments from Brazil, from Agnaldo Arroyo. But if uh, uh, it's uh, it's morning in in São Paulo in Brazil now, and uh, Agnaldo is sleeping so long, and but I I hope he he will join us uh, in, in 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 the future. Okay, thanks once again. And uh, uh, do we have uh, next presenter? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Yes, Sasha, Sasha from University of Novi Sad, Republic of Serbia. And yes. this is another part of the world. We are returning from South Africa continent from winter to summer time again. But the same time zone. <laughs> yes, but temperature it's totally different. Totally different. It's hot here. I'll now I'll share, share my presentation. Yeah, please. it's warm here. So, just to ask, do you see my presentation? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you all and greetings to you all. I'm glad to be here to present at this conference for the second time. I'm sad because we are not in Lithuania, but who knows, maybe time change will change in this Corona situation. So as Vincent has mentioned, uh, I'm Sasha. I'm assistant professor at uh, Faculty of Sciences Novi Sad from Serbia, and I work at the Department of Chemistry, Biochemistry and Environmental Protection. And today I'll give you a presentation about procedure for assessment of the cognitive complexity of the problems with uh, limiting reactant. Uh, these presentations could be very interesting to teacher and it's some new way to manage uh, to uh, take care about complexity of the task and uh, very interesting to make a more objective uh, assessment of uh, complexity of the task which is very struggling for complexity is very struggling for the students. So we need to First, to make some introduction, uh, what is limiting reactant? As um, maybe someone doesn't know, I'm chemist, and limiting reactant is one uh, very uh, difficult concept uh, in many research that confirmed that. And as Olmsted pointed out, a limiting reactant is reactant that first reacts all in a chemical reaction. Uh, it's consumed first. Uh, limiting reactant stop reaction uh, when it fully reacts and after that he stop reaction. For example, in chemical reaction of hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen molecules, uh, they react uh, in sto stoichiometric ratio two to one. And in this slide, in this picture, we can see that uh, limiting reactant is hydrogen. He's all consumed and produce wa water molecules and excess reagent a reactant, a reactant is oxygen. Of course, um, this is very difficult concept to students. They don't know uh, how to, how to determine limiting reactant in some reactions. Uh, it's very confusing to calculate uh, how many uh, reactant reacts in chemical reaction if uh, ratio of stoichiometric coefficient isn't uh, one to one. Uh, they are struggling with uh, units uh, in which reactants are expressed and uh, many analogies can be found on the internet. Uh, it's, they are free and they can uh, help students to understand this. Uh, this concept. Uh, some of them I found on internet and I put on this slide. Uh, they are in chemical manner and of course uh, this team, uh, this concept is very difficult so some of them uh, can try to use some analogies from real life to uh, come close to students close, uh, come closer with students to this uh, concept. Uh, the uh, students struggle with uh, this concept and it's uh, many students difficulties are noted with this concept. Um, it's because of complexity of that uh, of this concept. Uh, many uh, many concepts uh, can be 
are represented in task with limiting reactant and they are very interconnected with different relations. It's uh, difficult to students, students and uh, it imposes a high uh, cognitive load on their working memory. Of course, uh, one of uh, recent um, measures of cognitive loads used in studies and that our group use is um, cognitive complexity and cognitive complexity uh, can be determined by uh, test test uh, characteristics. Uh, many of um, test characteristics um, contribute to cognitive complexity and uh, cognitive complexity is very good uh, because experts can um, make um, make some measures about uh, difficulty of concept and uh, slowly introduce concept, uh, new concept to the students and uh, taking a care uh, that in any moment uh, doesn't come to cognitive load uh, overload of uh, students working memory. Uh, to determine cognitive complexity, uh, one uh, very good instrument and uh, or procedure was um, discovered and presented in in uh, some works of American scientists is uh, the, they created the rubrics for estimation of cognitive complexity. It's very useful because you can uh, determine cognitive uh, complexity in numerical way and show that uh, show cognitive complexity of some task with the number number. Of course, uh, due to the specificity of domain, these rubrics need to be upgraded so our group uh, we started to develop uh, have been started to develop uh, group, uh, tables for estimation of difficulty of concepts represented in some domain and their interactivity of course that is the that is uh, the main um, uh, the main aim of uh, our research that i'm presenting we need uh, we started to develop a procedure for assessment of cognitive complexity of limiting reactant problem task. And from this uh, research aim, two objective aims uh, were created. Uh, first of all, we need to develop a table for assessment of cognitive complexity of limiting reactant problem tasks. And of course, second one to validate this uh, procedure. Of course, we need uh, we combine our tables with developed uh, rubrics. Uh, one of them that we uh, usually use uh, is uh, cognitive complexity rating rubrics uh, developed by Naus et al. Uh, 10 years ago. And uh, we got many, uh, vali we validate many procedures for assessment and now we are trying to validate uh, this, this one. So in this research, uh, 58 participants uh, were, were participate they were 15 to 16 uh, years old uh, from secondary or high school and they were gymnasium students uh, we done this study uh, before before this situation of corona and for this uh, research we created uh, instrument for assessment or achievement it was a test a test contained seven tasks uh, every task was scored win, win, with one point, and we um, take account only taking account only completely uh, done task, uh, uh, half done task, or if student nothing try uh, scored zero points. And students have uh, two school classes in Serbia is uh, 90 minutes uh, for this research. Uh, with the same test, uh, we also measured. Uh, invested mental effort uh, and for that that purpose we used seven point liquor scale uh, after each complete or incomplete uh, task uh, at the beginning students uh, uh, got instruction uh, to try to determine um, difficulty or of their of tasks that they were solving and of course uh, uh, the uh, seven point liquor scale has values from ex uh, have uh, meaning from extremely easy to extremely difficult and in uh, statistic um, data we use that values from one for extremely easy to extremely difficult as seven neither easy nor difficult it was something in the middle and has value 
uh, for. Of course, uh, the main uh, main uh, instrument that we developed was and that we tested for procedure was table for assessment difficulty of concept and their interactivity in limiting reactant problems. Uh, and of course, uh, we can see that each concept uh, are sorted uh, as they difficulty as easy, medium or difficult. And of course, they are split in two subsections. One was a chemical equation with given quantitative quantity relations and other one was limiting reactant. Uh, chemical equation concepts were sorted uh, uh, according to a stoichiometric ratio and the limiting reactant was sorted about uh, from the units in which uh, reactant air or required substances or, or product of react were expressed. Of course, we uh, give them all uh, chemical equation with coefficient because we don't we wanted only to uh, to determine sto stoichiometric ratio in, in in this in this research and how they uh, conclude which reactant is limiting and of course interactivity uh, was measured according to number of concepts uh, magic number was uh, three concepts if if they're in the task less than three concepts one or two. Uh, interactivity has value uh, zero, uh, three concept has uh, interactivity ratio value one, and uh, over the three concept four or more have interactivity value as two. Uh, maybe it sounds very complicated how how this procedure works, and but it's very easy. Uh, this is one task from our test, uh, and it was given to student to calculate uh, uh, how many grams of ammonium chloride is produced in reaction of hydrogen and chloride and ammonia. And of course, the masses of these two reactants were given to the students. And um, from perspective of experts, we need to determine what, uh, which concepts are represented in this task. Uh, so we use it, uh, our table that we created and uh, as we've seen, there are two easy concepts with uh, this violet color and two medium concepts. And of course, uh, total number of concepts is uh, four, so interactivity uh, has value two. And now we need to use a rubric uh, created from now set all to determine a numerical rating of difficulty of this concept and to obtain finally rating of cognitive complexity. As we see in the table, we have two easy concepts and two easy concepts according to this rubric has value rating of difficulty two and uh, two medium concepts have, have a rating uh, difficulty uh, of uh, rating of difficulty three. So we need only to sum that these uh, values two, two plus three plus two give a cognitive complexity rating of this task uh, seven. In the same manner, we calculated uh, cognitive complexity rating uh, for other test tasks and we got values from six uh, to, ten, to ten. And of course, uh, final, finally, we need to uh, statistical data for this procedure to see does it works or not. So for method validation, average student's achievement on the test was 3.46, which means that student could solve at uh, least uh, three tasks and uh, invested uh, rating of students invested mental efforts was 3.80 which means that uh, uh, mental effort on the test they were something between easy or neither easy not difficult uh, the use uh, the use test uh, show good um, metric characteristics uh, uh, re re reliability was calculated as Kronbach alpha coefficient and it had has value 0.65 for students achievement uh, and 0.73 for students rating uh, of mental effort, which means th that is good reliability for achievement and excellent for uh, student invested mental effort. Uh, 
item difficulty indices were in range somewhere between uh, uh, 14 and 97 uh, percent. Other uh, test difficulty was 49.51 uh, percent, which, mean, which means that test was moderately difficult. Uh, discrimination indices were in range for 0.07 to 1. Uh, discrimination index of the test war uh, was uh, 0 0.59, which means the test has excellent index discrimination. Only one task that has uh, discrimination index 0 0.07 uh, could be reconsider reconsidered or throw away from, from this test and maybe um, change with some other task. Um, of course, uh, test was validate uh, with um, obtaining uh, uh, dependence of students' achievement from student invested mental effort, and we obtained really good correlation coefficient. is It's minus uh, 0 0.58, which means that uh, with increasing uh, with more investment of students' mental effort, achievement decreases. Equation is also given on this slide. Uh, this is statistically significant moderate correlation because p-value has uh, value is value is less than 0 0.05. To validate this uh, procedure, uh, we need to uh, obtain a coefficient, correlation coefficient between students' achievement uh, and cognitive complexity and mental effort and cognitive complexity. Uh, because student achievement has value only zero or one, if task is completely correct or incorrect, uh, we uh, uh, this area correlation uh, correlation was done, and we obtained coefficient minus 0 0.37, and it's statistically significant and but moderate correlation, but uh, it's acceptable uh, because of this area correlation correlation and. Uh, for dependence of mental effort from cognitive complexity, uh, we uh, uh, spearman row co correlation was done, uh, we, and we obtained correlation co coefficient uh, 0 0.58, uh, with, uh, which is moderate, moderate, closely to strong uh, correlation, and p-value is less than 0 0.0. Uh, five, which means that uh, this is statistically significant uh, correlation between uh, dependent variables, achievement and mental effort, and cognitive complexity. Uh, this is a usual way to, to validate this procedure or method, but we obtained some very interesting um, result in our task, uh, in task, uh, namely, uh, Two group of tasks had same value of cognitive complexity rating. Uh, task number one and two have rating of uh, cognitive complexity rating seven, and task uh, five, five and six have cognitive complexity rating ten. But uh, there was something interesting in this task, namely in the first task and uh, six task uh, was higher student achievement, but they have same level of cognitive complexity. We try to find out what is this, uh, what is problem here. And we consulted many, uh, we consulted the uh, teacher, consulted many scientific literature, and we found that in this research and in this task, uh, units were, units were 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 key for for that result. Namely, in task number one, in task number six, where is higher uh, achievement of students, uh, units were expressed in grams, and in task uh, number five and two, units were in amount of substance. It's really tricky because you know you need to use molar mass masses to calculate uh, mass, and all all in from stoichiom from chemical reaction you using stoichiometric coefficient, you easily can uh, determine uh, what, it, what is limiting reactant, but we found uh, Olsen, Olmsted pointed out in his research um, 20 years ago uh, that uh, students uh, usually uh, pick up limiting reactant based on, on strategy, strategy of teacher or strategy that uh, 
can be found in 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 some in literature literature that they are using. So to come to the end to conclude this and and this uh, our research. So design procedure for assessment of cognitive complexity uh, is valid and reliable. We got uh, statistically significant coefficient. Of course, with decrease with increasing of uh, cognitive complexity, uh, student students achievement decreasing and uh, students invested invested more um, mental effort. Uh, it's very. Um, can be used in, in uh, teaching because uh, teacher can slowly uh, give to students more and more complex uh, problems in the same time avoiding the cognitive overload of students working memory. Some limitations, of course, we found that on the last slide. First of all, sample of respondents, maybe uh, more respondents you have, uh, uh, more, more valid your research is. And of course, literature itself, because uh, in uh, Republic of Serbia, we consulted uh, our um, our literature. Many of limiting reactant prob problems are explained in units of grams, nor normal or 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 something like volume and other stuff. And of course, implication is we won't stop on this. We will continue to develop a table for other domains and help to uh, get more objective assessment of complexity of problem tasks. And that's all. Thank you, uh, Sasha. It's really good. Please stop sharing. Yes, I stopped. It's good. It's really a specific, interesting chemistry. <laughs> related presentation. It's it's really nice. Uh, my first questions, maybe colleagues also uh, will give some questions. Uh, uh, you mentioned the trend uh, as a limitation was a simple size. Obviously, if I remember, you mentioned 58 participants. Yeah. Uh, what do you think uh, to because uh, for creation for development of an instrument. It's it's a really small sample. Yeah, despite that statistically you you prove that everything is more or less OK. And uh, are you going uh, or are you planning to to perform, for example, a cross validation uh, with another sample, for example? Uh, yes, definitely because of this slide when I pointed out of units uh, expressed, uh, it was interesting. We we can imagine that something that could happen, and of course we will try, of course, with our students and some other school uh, to expand our research sample and to validate. You know, as I mentioned, more participants you have, more validate uh, result you will got. OK, and uh, but, but you know, it's really easy. I'm sorry that I interrupt you. It's really, really easy because of uh, syllabus and 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 teaching uh, many of our teachers uh, doesn't have time to uh, participate in, in research from faculty. And you know, we, we are struggling with that and keep fighting. And uh, OK, but uh, what let's say what is uh, the practical benefit uh, of this, let's say, of this work in general? You created a test or, a, let's say, specific instrument. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but what is practical benefit for this? Uh -huh. Practical benefit, um, uh, you can um, introduce a concept by concept. You know, you can start, for example, in this research in limiting reactant. Uh, you can try with your students to take uh, with them to solve problems to this de de determine limiting reactant first and after that you can try to they to calculate uh, a number or or how many product they they got they got in chemical reaction and uh, you can uh, you can uh, your concept can be uh, more and more complex and you adding them and if they don't know to 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 solve that task you come back 
to the to the beginning and start over and slowly give them more and more complex tasks. Mm -hmm. you no, know, to to take account what they mastered at the moment of testing and after that give them more more complex problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, OK, but uh, let's say again uh, in order to continue how to apply, for example, uh, practically in schools, for example, having in mind the chemistry teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. He or she should apply this this instrument or, 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 or what? Uh, this instrument uh, can uh, perform them to calculate. Comp for example, they found some task in 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 their books, and they easily can calculate uh, a numerical rating of cognitive complexity. Uh, for example, he had five tasks, and one is complexity six, another is seven, etc. And he can oh, okay. We'll start with. Uh, Easiest one to the hardest one. Oh. That's all. OK. Thanks, Sasha. Uh, uh, do you have some more questions or not? No, no uh, raised hands. No, no questions. Yes, we have one from Lucas. Rick, Rick one. OK. OK, it's maybe not a big question, but just a remark. Thank you for your presentation. I think it's interesting that the units are involved in the complexity of the problem. I can confirm it uh, from the physics point of view. Also, if we use uh, non-standard or less common units, it, uh, I would say, makes a bigger complexity for the problem. So maybe a suggestion, shouldn't it be included in the complexity scale uh, of the problem? Uh, yes, units should be included in complexity scale, definitely. Because if we, after we done our research, we we noticed that that units are maybe key for that for complexity. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, we see we see Andres from from Latvia. Also joined us. Maybe you want to ask something. Andres? Not? Not ready yet, maybe for questions, maybe later on. Uh, OK, uh, thanks once again, and we uh, inviting uh, our colleagues, our neighbors from Latvia, University of Latvia, Ilva Cinete. Oh, I see you. It's Nice. I hope uh, you uh, hear me <laughs> good enough. Yeah, I, I, I at least I, I see very well, and uh, I, I hope an, uh, other colleagues too. Please, okay. uh, Ilva, you 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 can start. Thank you. Uh, hello, colleagues. Uh, first, uh, greetings to you uh, on the summer solstice day. Uh, the longest day this year is today. And I'm honored to introduce you to the study of uh, the P Department of uh, Physics of the University of Latvia. But first, uh, attention a little bit to the slide one in which you see interior view of uh, the new building of the university, uh, the House of Science, where the Department of Physics is located and uh, the new physicists are studying here and students in the surveys emphasize uh, that the learning environment is excellent and we and we invite you to visit us as well we will uh, meet you and introduce you to university and uh, latvia and its capital city you are welcome here uh, is the plan of my presentation i will introduce you with uh, uh, why triggered we this study and we'll introduce you to the results of the study and finally what we can conclude uh, we, what we can conclude and first a uh, few introductory sentences about study uh, duration of our study is four years and the three universities of uh, Latvia University of Latvia Riga Technical University 
and Vance Pils University of Applied Science were involved in this research. Uh, and those universities, I can say, are most important players in the physics and engineering field, study, study field uh, in Latvia. And our initial research uh, was carried out uh, at the University of Latvia uh, only for one undergra uh, undergraduate uh, calculus-based group in physics, and results were reported at the Baltic State 19 conference. Uh, the research uh, was continued uh, for students at several universities until uh, autumn 2020, when due to remote training, it was decided to not use our uh, method uh, remotely. The participants, uh, students were undergraduate students, approximately 18, 20, uh, 20 years old. Uh, those uh, were, uh, were th uh, three calculus-based uh, groups and eight non-calculus-based groups. As you see, more than uh, 400 pre-test results we had. And um, uh, uh, classes were thought by eight lecturers uh, with different levels of um, academic ranking, uh, three associate profs, professors, three docents, and two lecturers. Um, three of the lecturers have uh, a doctor degree, and other five have uh, a master degree. But uh, going forward, I can say uh, our results, study results, showed uh, the academic level of lectures did not guarantee uh, um, that the results for the students would be better or worse. Uh, similarly, uh, the lecturers' experience in teaching did not m did not mean uh, that those who had worked uh, for many years would receive the best student uh, tests. And here uh, you can see uh, why did we trigger this study. Uh, several reasons. First, um, here on uh, in the slide, you can see first objective. We wanted to access the level uh, of the basic physics concepts of students. Uh, of course, it is valuable to diagnose students in physics when they start the first year. And uh, uh, the objectives uh, on the left side will be linked uh, in my presentation in uh, ne some next slides too, uh, with steps of study. Um, uh, our students are uh, so different, uh, different, of course. A small background is needed here, namely uh, in Latvia, st students are enrolled in the universities after completing uh, secondary education, of course, and uh, after participating in centralized, uh, centralized examinations organized by states. Um, but the, uh, there is no mandatory, mandatory uh, final exam in, phys in physics, and students can enroll the science and engineering faculties in Latvia without physics exam grades. It is possible to, to be uh, accepted uh, at the university out only uh, by the result of uh, mass final exam. And that is one of the reasons why students are um, uh, so different and in different levels. But um, uh, we need access, understanding, and this start point. And that is why we uh, chose a first concept inventory test. Uh, namely, our instrument was uh, first concept inventory or FCI. Mm. It is uh, validated uh, uh, um, to measure conceptual understanding and um, it uh, was uh, developed and first applied by Heston as well as Weckemer in 1992 and has been widely used for many years. And it is possible to compare results with other results uh, with, uh, in the world. Uh, so far, 
it is um, administered to countless students. Plus, um, evidence uh, evidence with uh, numbers and facts uh, breaks uh, teacher skepticism about studies abilities, as well as draws attention to choice. Uh, uh, effective uh, study process. And as you see uh, here further, uh, uh, FCI uh, questions are based on misconceptions. And um, that is one more reason why we chose it. Um, and uh, it is uh, written uh, understandable by all levels of students uh, because uh, those tests are without specific terms and formulas. And so we needed um, evidence based. Uh, and research-based uh, test for for uh, start point and for diagnosis uh, of our students and pre uh, to do pretests. Um, next one objective of our study is comparison with uh, pretest uh, data elsewhere in the world. Um, as I said, FCI has been administrated to countless thousands of students at many universities worldwide, and uh, it uh, has been re-examined. Uh, the main bulk uh, of studies using FCI is done in United States, but during 30 years uh, of the test, it has been used in uh, UK and Scandinavia and elsewhere. And um, our study allowed uh, to verify the FCI in the context of education system in Latvia. We wanted to co compare it. This one was one more objective. And uh, here it is used for many years, has been administrated, um, not lost its relevance, as I said. And next one step, um, analyzing the pre-test and post-test results and calculate, uh, calculating of the gain, which tells about students' growth of understanding of uh, the physics concepts. Uh, briefly, uh, this is uh, the objective and briefly about method of the measurement. Um, first of all, pre-test. It is uh, given to students in the first lecture before starting the course. Uh, it is given to students in person, in classroom, in writing. Uh, when it is possible, uh, the course lecturer do not know to test questions in order to, to prevent uh, lecturers from preparing uh, students to the post-test. Uh, then, next one step is the process. And uh, uh, these lecturers uh, take uh, um, according, accordingly, you know, uh, as the uh, lecturer intends. And then uh, the post test is given out, uh, uh, is given out at the end of the course of mechanics, and then gain is calculated. And here you can see. Uh, how can we calculate gains? Uh, one is absolute gain the result, which shows uh, the difference between the students' result before and after studies. Um, the test questions are not uh, pre and post test questions are not identical, but um, they are designed uh, to test the same concept of mechanics about speed or, or forces or interactions. And here you can see formula of relative uh, gain. Uh, it is used uh, since it less depend on uh, the initial knowledge of students. And it allows to compare groups with uh, different pre-test results because some groups uh, uh, have uh, low pre-test and some uh, are better in average pre-test. Uh, and as you see in the formula, uh, actually a relative gain may be interpreted as an 
effectiveness of the process. Uh, this is absolute increase against to maximum possible increase. This is our instrument. Okay, and last one objective. Uh, the results serve um, to improve the quality of the study process. Um, and uh, uh, the quality of uh, study pro process in University of Latvia is accessed by numbers of criteria and results of gain uh, can, uh, it is one of uh, those criteria because it can uh, provide us with information uh, whether the study process uh, has taken place with a student-centered approach or no. And uh, the test results also serve to make uh, recommendations uh, to improve access and quality. Okay, and uh, here are the results. First, you can see uh, two histograms. Um, and those uh, histograms uh, tell us, uh, us about pre-test results uh, for uh, on the left side, non-calculus-based uh, groups, and here for calculus-based groups. Um, uh, here, uh, on, on the X, -S, uh, X, you can see uh, the result of the uh, test, pre-test, but on the y-axis is normal, uh, normalized probability. And what we can see here, mm, the shape of uh, histogram for non-calculus based group uh, made us think of random distribution. Uh, therefore, uh, we compared the results uh, of the pretest uh, with a distribution for random guessing. Uh, for guessing, one correct answer out of five equally possible answers. So this dashed line uh, is a random probability. Uh, namely, uh, pretest has 14 questions, and each question uh, has five possible answers, and student must choose uh, the right one. And as can be seen, the pretest results of uh, non calculus based groups, uh, we have uh, more than uh, 300 students, uh, remarkably well coincide. Uh, with uh, the binomial distribution generated by random guessing, uh, both distributions, uh, histogram and this uh, random distribution, are very close to each other. This suggests uh, that students were also able to guess the answers. And uh, they may not uh, might uh, might not uh, possess knowledge of uh, basic concepts of physics uh, prior to enrollment at university, even uh, if their score uh, is above the an, an average. Uh, in other words, um, they uh, the higher score may be a pure chance. But uh, on the right side, you can see a uh, histogram of uh, pretest data of uh, uh, calculus based groups. Those are our physicists. Um, and here you can see the center of uh, distribution um, of uh, correct answers uh, is shifted uh, to the right uh, along x x and uh, it points um, uh, to some initial uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge of students. Uh, yes, uh, these students were motivated to learn physics uh, in advance um, and choose to study physics at university and uh, the data are of pretest are better. Uh, so uh, these are our students uh, who enroll universities and this is our start point uh, for our lecturers. Uh, yeah, next one uh, slide. Mm. Here you can see also some diagrams. Uh, let's see uh, them. And here you can, can see uh, non-calculus based groups 
pre and post tests. Pre and post tests. Uh, on the X, X again, uh, here are pre uh, test results, pre and post test results. But here uh, is number of students. Um, here are lecturer centered uh, approach groups, which uh, are less uh, and student centered approach groups. The numbers of, of students are more than uh, 2000 uh, here on y, y X. And um, uh, pre-test data uh, concentrate about 20 percent. As I said, uh, this is uh, something like guessing. Uh, it looks a little bit different as previous because I divided here lect lecturer centered and student centered groups. And um, if we see that uh, after the test, uh, the data is more uh, skate, uh, scattered uh, and shifted uh, to the right, uh, uh, but, but for, all, all, for both groups, but uh, uh, it is more concentrated uh, to the right uh, for students centered approach. Uh, that is what we can see in our uh, non-calculus based groups uh, histograms. Uh, but uh, next one, uh, this is uh, the same for calculus based groups. There is uh, there we have uh, less data and as you see uh, here data are more scattered. Uh, the test results and post test results, but for uh, student centered approach it, uh, shifting is uh, more than uh, for lecturer centered approach and it is uh, well visible. And last one graph uh, provides us uh, with information about the, about the growth of students' knowledges and the approach of uh, study uh, process. Let's see it. Uh, here we can see pretest, and here we can see gain in percents. And um, uh, it is. Uh, Mm, the visual style of this graph is adapted for uh, for Hake's study. Um, there's why we can see here different colors, but uh, those are our data for our groups. Um, at the bottom uh, is placed low gain, and here is medium, and here is uh, high gain um, uh, results. And according uh, to the Hasten study, uh, here for low gain uh, results uh, uh, where lecturer work with the lecturer centered uh, approach uh, we can call it traditional methods and Hake uh, concluded that the, the results uh, strongly suggest uh, that the traditional courses fail to give much basic conceptual understanding of uh, Newton, uh, Newtonian mechanics to the average student. Uh, OK, mm, our our results, uh, as you see, uh, are consisting with the studies uh, mentioned 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 net before above and uh, lecturers who worked with uh, student centered um, approach uh, have their groups in the middle. They are marked with uh, yellow uh, squares. Uh, those were six group and the main uh, difference between student centered approach uh, and uh, traditional lecture was the lecturers used uh, peer instruction methods uh, during the lectures. Uh, gaining immediately uh, immediate uh, feedback um, on students understanding. Uh, of the topic and uh, they gave regu uh, regular feedback to the students. Uh, dashed lines uh, shows us uh, uh, average uh, result of average gains and result uh, about 25 percent uh, shows that students had been able to reach uh, just a quarter of possible gain on a basic mechanics test. 
Uh, but uh, here we can see uh, this is approximately 34% uh, percent, uh, middle, middle or average gain. And uh, yeah, we can see how our groups work. And uh, finally, conclusions. Um, we have now info uh, about the incoming channel, uh, how our, our students' uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge and understanding in physics, and uh, what we can do with this information. Uh, so we can describe the incoming group. Um, uh, and important thing is uh, that uh, lecture uh, be able to uh, give uh, students high growth if uh, works with student-centered approach. Um, that is uh, why not no traditional teaching form fits uh, st study process need to be adapted. Um, yeah, because data says us that the student-centered approach works better. Uh, and we have only few physics students and we have even fewer uh, future physics teachers. So our education is so important. And uh, authors uh, of this research are grateful uh, to all lecturers of physics courses uh, to their permission to perform this study um, and uh, uh, for the interest uh, of student-centered methods. And we are grateful to the Department of Physics of University of Latvia for support. Thank you. Uh, questions? Uh, thanks, uh, Ilva, very much. It's really nice. Uh, we have one question. Uh, can you check in, in conversation window? Yeah, it is long text. Uh, may I forward question to my colleague, Dietz Patrino, which is uh, Author of this. Ah, did sounds word to this. Uh, yeah, uh, if we have a hundred uh, persons uh, persons in pretest, um, Hague study tells about those students. Yeah, this is not uh, effective uh, measuring method for those students. We have to choose another. Uh, but but yeah, this is a small interval for some students. It doesn't work for this. Yeah, uh, and uh, it is uh, explained in our in, and in in our. Um, um, study and in uh, studies before. Yeah, it is one thing. But uh, actually uh, in calculate based uh, calculate based groups every year we have only one, two uh, or, or three. Uh, this, this is ma maximum uh, students which uh, have uh, uh, Got uh, the, this hundred percent pretest, and uh, our first group. I did not say our uh, our first group of student-centered approach uh, uh, and calculus-based students uh, gain um, sixty-five percent relative gain, which is a high result. And uh, they are finishing uh, undergraduate uh, studies this year. This is three years old, uh, our students, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, more questions, please. We have enough time. Oh, yeah, we have another question. Yes, we compared uh, country results with other 
Count, no, we do not have uh, country results uh, if you mean high school, because we have only those uh, physics and engineering stu uh, students uh, what we have yeah, at university level uh, or undergraduate level. And this is our next uh, wish and um, plan to uh, test uh, high school students. Yeah, but it uh, is not done yet because um, distantly uh, learning uh, does not, remote uh, the process uh, doesn't allow uh, this uh, FCI process to do. Mm -hmm. OK. Oh, we have no not not a question, just a comment from Karel. Uh, the last I think. Can, can you can you see it? Yes. No comments. Um, agree. <laughs> agree. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Agree. Okay. 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 Uh, I, I do not see any more questions. Yeah. We, now we have colleague from Taiwan. Yeah. You see how it's nice to to travel around the world. Yeah. From Latvia, we jumping to to Taiwan, to Asia. Oh my lord! How it's nice. <laughs> the sun is too. Small. I can't hear clearly. Okay. Next presenter from national uh, national. Sorry for my pronunciation. National Dong Hua University. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. But your sound is too small. I can't hear clearly. Yeah, you can start your presentation with. Please share your presentation. OK, thank you. Can you see my presentation? Not yet. Okay. And now it's okay, just full full view. Huh? Okay. Oh. Hello everybody. I am even a PhD student of Donghua University in Taiwan. Today I'm going to introduce my research with you. My topic is exploring the effectiveness and impacts of using different media to learn science. Okay, let's see the background. Since the spread of COVID-19 in 2019, countries have begun to adapt different lockdown measures as the epidemic has become more and more severe. This includes decisions that affect education such as closing schools, suspension of schools, suspension of classes, and so on. The United Nations report points out that as of mid July 2020, more than 1 billion students have been affected by the suspension. Therefore, the needs of using media for online self learning and self learning at home has arisen. Regarding online, okay, regarding online or home based self learning, 
it is necessary to use media to deliver the information. This is my research question. Which type of media like can con convey the concept of heat transfer to elementary school students most efficiently? Which type of media are elementary school students more interested in? In previous study reported that the use of media should also consider how to communicate effectively. The function of media is not only to deliver the scientific information, but also to show scientific information. Ernest et al. defines science communication as the use of appropriate skills, media, activities, and dialogues to produce one or more personal responses to science. These res responses are classified into five categories. There are awareness, enjoyment, interest, opinion formation, and understanding. And we use the AEIOU as the assessment framework to evaluate the e effectiveness of media. And I will introduce them in the next. First, awareness. For science, it pro provides a basis for knowledge, broaden thinking, and creates opportunities for individuals to participate in scientific activities. This study defines awareness as being aware of the importance of science and technology and being able to understand the nature of science. Enjoyment may evoke positive feelings and attitudes of participants, so that participants are more likely to produce subsequent and in-depth scientific activities. The research regards enjoyment as the pleasant life experience owned by today's technology. Next, the interest is an interesting form of motivation, which can drive an individual to learn more about a topic of interest. This research regards interest as the tendency and intention to participate in scientific issues, events, or activities. Opinions are closely related to knowledge, beliefs, and emotion responses, and it's not easy to implement. In this research, the opinions formation is defined as opinions or viewpoints formed in the reflection of the public to support their arguments on certain scientific issues. The understanding of science includes comprehension of scientific content, process, and social factors. We define the understanding as the understanding of the required scientific knowledge. Next, I will introduce the research method. Uh, this is my research object. The participants we use six classes of third grade students in an elementary school and with an average age of nine years old and 155 students in total. And we can see the animation group has 49 people and instruction video group has 49 people too. And the Sign comic group has 47 people. The, <clears throat> then the two classes are treat one group, and six classes are divided into three groups. 
and of of and the map and the mission group instructional video group and science coming groups then introduce the media which are used in the experiment first the animation materials used in this study are from GE Academy website that let's take a look And Jin E Academy, which is a non profit educational organization in Taiwan, that use an online learning model. This website focuses on providing equal and high quality educational resources for every child. And uh, we can see they have questions. The animation playback will be posted during the question time, and these two, two, one question and two answers. It will continue to play only after the question is answered correct, correctly. The an correct answer is B. And which Increase increasing the opportunities for online self learning and interaction. Okay, go back the presentation. Oh, next, next instructional video. The instructional video used in this research are especially filled with textbook content. Okay, let's take a view. And this instruction video is about the effect of he on matter. Instructional videos are a direct presentation of a re realistic situation with narrations, texts, and simple symbols, such as arrows. The teaching content can be presented simply and clearly. And this is text and sound narrations. Okay. Next. Next, the uh, sign comic. We use the 3D material for the science comic book is the King of Science Experiment 10, The Blow of Heat. And take a look. The King of the King of Science Experiment is published by Shanghai Publishing House. It was originally a South Korea comic. This set of book takes compositions for experimentation as the main plot and the protagonist participates in the experiment composition and brings out learning knowledge. But the science knowledge content of this book is relatively less. The home book contains 15 pages of knowledge related to heat transfer. And we can see the comparison table of media. The animation and instructional video are online resource. And instructional video has 
four videos. The total time is 10 minutes, 60, 36 seconds. And the king of science experiment 10 doesn't have concept of heat radiation. So another heat radiation article is attached. Now we look in the research procedures. After divide the student into three groups, the animation group, instructional video group, and science co comic group. All three groups first accept the pre-test of the understanding test. After the test, the animation group first accept the animation viewing. The instruction video group first watch the instructional video. And the science comic group first read the king of science experiment 10. After the them is finished, all students will conduct the post-test of the understanding test. After the post-test, each group need to watch or read the other two media. For example, the animation group need to watch the instructional video and read science comic. After watch or reading all of the media, the AEIO questionnaire will be implemented and we analysis data make conclusion. Now introduce the assessment instrument. The AEIO questionnaire is a depth from a scale for science edu communication. The scale has undergone statistical tests and has proven to be a reliability and reliable instrument to measure the effectiveness of science communication. The understanding tests are first we decide 31 items. Some items were rejected due to their too poor discrimination index. Finally, there were 16 items in the understanding test. Let's see the question type of AIOU and number of items. The awareness in German interest, we used a fine polyclinical scale and they each have six items. And opinion formation use one open-ended question. Understanding has 16 items and, oh, and yes or no questions and multiple choice questions. The data analysis of AI questionnaire. Uh, we can see the blue is an blue is an animation, orange is instruction instructional videos, and the gray is science comic. The score of awareness in German or in tourist is is from one point to five point with a higher total score than the, the native higher levels of AEI. The average score of the AEI dimension is above four. This data shows that no matter what kind of media teaching, students have a positive attitude toward AEI dimensions. Among the three media, the animations got the highest average score in the two dimension of awareness and enjoyment. And the science comic had the highest average score in the interest dimension. And then see the analysis of the answer to open and questions of opinion formation. The question of opinion formation is that if you have a house, what can you do to make the people feel cooler in the house? 
please try to explain from the installation of air conditioning, the treatment of the wall, the position of the window, and the others. Because the third grade student have a limited vocabulary and insufficient discussion skills, the proportion of answers is not high and only short sure words are answered. The answer of opinion formation are coding and analyze. They are divided into heat conduction group, heat convention group, heat radiation group, and aero groups. Let's see the student's answer. The heat convention group answer are uh, like uh, the air condition is installed installed on the ceiling above the room and windows are installed on the left and right side of the house and he radiation answer has one a uh, pen white words and the arrow groups like did not write or air condition is stored next to the tv windows is stored next to the door and because the question can have more than one answer, so the calculation of the ratio is the number of students with a sentence, sentence answer divided by total number of answers. And we can see the ratio. Uh, from the results, we know that students are more familiar with the concept of heat conventions and have a higher rate of correct answer. The students may be influenced by the question, so they do not answer in the aspect of heat conduction at all. The third grade students may be limited by insufficient life experience, language skills, scientific knowledge, and other factors. So their performance in opinion formation is bad. So we see the understanding test results. About result of the understanding test, we compare post test scores influenced by the three groups of media. Use the analysis of one way ANOVA and the F value is 0 0.208 and the P value is 0 0.812, which is above 0 0.05. It means that three groups of media have no significant influence on the post test scores of the understanding test. And then we use the analysis of the pair sample t test to compare the inference on post test scores by each medium. And animation group p value is 0.008, is less than 0.05. Average post test score is higher than average pre test score. Instructional video group p-value is 0.03 is less, less than 0.05. Average post-test score is higher than average pre-test score. Science comic group p-value is 0.047 is less than 0.05. Average post-test score is higher than average pre-test score. Analysis in integrating the above data shows that no matter what kind of media can improve the participants' understanding of heat transfer and conclusions. The results point out that the third grade student had positive feedback on the three dimensions of awareness, enjoyment, and interest. And all three media can improve students' understanding of heat transfer. And there is no difference between them. 
for the uh, aspect of opinion formation because the third grade students are relatively young and have insufficient life experience and scientific knowledge, the response is poor. In summary, these three types of media have positive impacts on the learning aspect of heat transfer and animation are more suitable for the third grade student to conduct self-learning. For older students, the media that is suitable for self-learning may be changed, which require further research. And it's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your presentation. <laughs> what? Angela wants to ask or not? Colleagues, please questions if you have some questions. I see no any questions. Uh, hello, Agnaldo. It is fine to have uh, you with us. Uh, however, uh, I think you had quite long night and you woke up so late and you missed the plenary meeting. Yeah. Yeah, so as you know, today is the winter solstice here in the South Hemisphere and in Brazil. Today is the officially the start of winter. And uh, but we are in the dark times, I could say, in the winter times. Yeah, so first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate all of you that woke up so early. Even I know that some people from the south part of the globe uh, to join the International Baltic Symposium because it's really important to have this kind of meeting and chance. And the result today is the, the start of winter. And, uh, but we are in the dark times, I could say, in the winter times. Uh, yeah, I guess that there is a delay, right? Uh, it's okay, you can speak. Yeah, quickly. So it's just to congratulate all of the participants and attendants, academic, practitioners, and all of people that are attending the Baltic uh, Science and Technology Education, because it's really important uh, to have this kind of meeting to promote science and to establish dialogue among people, especially to cross the border of the academia and to reach people and on the streets and, and the villages and everywhere. You clearly can see the damage when you have a president denialist that we have in Brazil or as US had the number of victims of the COVID. So and I would also like to congratulate especially the last presenter, Dr. Wen Lu, because uh, to bring this important issue, the communication of science, how to use media to spread the scientific knowledge and scientific understand. This is one important way that you have to reach all of the people, more than just schoolers, but all the people in general. So congratulate for all of the work that you have done and uh, actually until tomorrow, because the, the, the conference, uh, continues until tomorrow. So on behalf of the IOC, International Organization for Science and Technology uh, and uh, Technology Education, I would like to congratulate all of you for all of the efforts that you have done to attend remotely that we know that due to the time zone, it's not easy, but it's important to move on with the science against the denialism across the world. So thank you for all of you. Uh, thanks, Agnaldo. Uh, do we have some comments or questions? Yeah. 
Yeah, just one question for the last presenter, uh, Dr. Wen Lu. Um, if they try this uh, research with different grades, because according to the results for the third grade, it shows that it was not appropriate for that age due to the lack of the life experiences and a lack, lack of scientific knowledge. If they already did it, this research and apply this model for different grades. Maybe uh, I, we can change the question type to as the third grade student, like so many question. Um, or I'm, I'm going to or some suitable guide to answer the question or maybe the treatment time will be longer mm. and I need did you have a chance yeah. did you have a chance to apply this model for a population in general a general audience or you were applying this model uh, just for schoolers. And it's past impossible. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. with pre-service teachers at a higher education institution in South Africa. And if you look at the newspaper titles in July 2020, these were the titles in the newspaper. You can quite clearly see COVID-19 is, is really something that has taken the world by storm. And when I say by storm, I don't mean a good storm, a very drastic storm. And you'll notice that in July 2020, South Africa was the fifth worst um, in terms of the number of cases that, that it had. Um, I'm not going to speak about the current context, but, I, but as you can see, um, there's another aspect that comes through very clearly is that there are grants that need to be given to people. And quite clearly, this is an indication of the economic downslide or the economic impact that this has had. And so it's not just economic, but it would also be social as well. I have no idea why not. Um, let me just see again. OK, so, so that's that's the um, title of my paper, how COVID-19 was an enabler for biological sciences, pre-service teachers, service learning projects. Now you know what the context is essentially. And let's carry on with the context. Uh, sorry, uh, Angela, and, sorry, Angela, please. Uh, we do not see your title presentation. Please share content. Oh, OK. Now? Not yet. We see you, but not your presentation. OK, let me go off. I must go off. The, the I can connections. See it. Yeah, we can see it. Oh, now it's OK. It's OK. OK, I'm going to go off because my connection's not good. OK, so you can see, see it. OK, thank you. So if we're looking at the context in um, our university with regard to now you see what's happening now. 
Okay, so at our university, we have a com a community engagement and the policy that we're working with. Um, with regard to community engagement, if you think about it, every university has three pillars essentially, and community engagement is the third pillar. The first one is always research, and I don't know why. Community engagement should be the first, but anyway, it's research. The second one is teaching and learning, and the third one is community engagement. And within the community engagement, what one is looking at is high impact in terms of the social impact that is taking place, and the stakeholders that you, in, you engage with within your community could be varied um, individuals. But what is important is that there should be mutual benefit and the mutual benefit is not decided by the university individuals but as the word actually indicates it's mutually decided so within to take this into the south african context um, community engagement is so important because each of the 26 heis um, which are the government heis all have to take the three principles into account, social responsibility, humaneness, and social justice. So if we look at this in the context of, so what is actually happening within our university, taking into account COVID-19 in 2020, and looking at what we are doing within a particular module, which is called a biological sciences module, and the students who take this module, you'll see I'll speak to that a bit more later on, but they are pre-service teachers. Um, so obviously last year, I'm talking about when I was teaching this module and working with this module in the second half of last year, we had major lockdown problems, both within the schools and also within the university. So this, obviously had a number of implications with how teaching and learning was taking place, with how the social dynamics were taking place within communities and also the economic and the political array um, in place. With regard to our students, everything was online. So what had to happen was the university had to close and the students had to move back to their homes and the online teaching was taking place and students were now based within their communities. And as you can see, there were lots of other issues that the students had to deal with, with regard to trauma, with regard to um, having data or being able to access data and that's where the economic dis dislocation comes in as well trying to access data in order for them to go online and to access the teaching and learning or the lectures which were taking place synchronously and some of the lectures were asynchronously um, presented. So obviously the, the whole learning foray within what was happening at the university and what was going to be expected with this particular group of students um, was totally different. Um, if we're looking at education within the bioscience module even further, um, there are a number of questions that, that were raised because it's looking at how ought we to teach and learn? And, and this, this is very, uh, very um, what can I say, in terms of the way in which the question is asked. It's a challenging one because obviously last year, many people, I think everybody throughout the world was faced with some sort of change that they had to go through. And what are the prospects for education during COVID-19 pandemic? So think about it. This is a biological sciences module. It goes over 13 weeks. These are third and fourth year students who are going to be high school teachers and they are pre-service teachers, obviously, and they are expected to take this module and in this module they learn about service learning and research. But my presentation today is just focusing on the service learning. So it's taught to the third and fourth year students. They learn about the theoretical underpinnings of it, the meaning of service learning. They have to learn about the context of South Africa and the context of, of what's happening within communities. How do you relate to community members? Because if you're going to be doing service learning within a community, you're going to be working with 
community members. And notice I use and I stress the word with. You're not working for, you're not working and, but you're working with, and that is critically important as well. And obviously, if this is all online, the big question is, how is it then going to be possible for these students to be working with communities in community settings within the time of the pandemic? And if, if I am teaching online, then, then how is it possible for me to be working with all these students? Um, it's important for me to say that we did have lectures, we had reflection sessions, they had group discussions, they had a reflective diary, we had seminars where the students had to present on the work they were actually doing. So essentially, when we're looking at what is service learning, and, and um, how do we work with all of this? You have to see now that if all these students are based in their home settings and the virtual teaching and learning is taking place, I've already alluded to the fact that this is a different contextual setting. In the past, the students were on campus and we would have the face-to-face -face discussions. We would then go out into the communities and look at how we could work with communities which were in close proximity to the university. Now, for many of these students, these communities, um, they were not familiar with the people in the communities, they were not familiar with the dynamics or anything of the sort within those particular communities, because obviously they come from many rural areas and they come and they live in the residences on campus. And when they're going to, to work with communities, they would have to work with those close to the university. So the question is, how could this be a meaningful enabler enhancer for how the pre-service teachers planned and implemented their service learning? And a lot of people would be saying, how could you ever say that COVID was such an enabler? And I think we really need to look at um, the positives that come with every situation that we actually experience. So for individuals who are not too familiar with what service learning is, it's actually, um, positioned within a module and that's why I'm saying biological sciences for educators module and within that module what happens is that I've taught or I teach the students about service learning. They learn about the theory, the different applications of it, how it works within communities and all this obviously now they need to go out and they actually need to act. So it's a lot of experiential learning that is taking place and it integrates practical experiences. Foucault is not the only person, there are so many other authors who also work with the meaning of service learning. Um, and within the theoretical frame, I'm looking at scholarship of teaching and learning, because if you think about it, it is integrated into the biological sciences module. So obviously there's teaching and learning that is taking place, but what is also important is experiential learning as well. So another theoretical framework that we could put in there is Kolb's experien experiential learning framework um, that, that one could be working with. So the scholarship of teaching and learning is really looking at the changes that are actually taking place and whether they are challenges or frustrations that are experienced, but essentially the change. And we need to focus on, on what that actually means. Um, quite quickly, I don't think I need to spend time with this because I, I think in terms of the paradigm approach case study, and um, these are terminologies that are very familiar to each one of you who are within the audience. I think what I will say is that the case study, um, it's a case study and it's got three phases to it and I will speak to the, the three phases and I will share them in terms of the um, findings when I'm speaking to the findings. But last year, just to give you an idea, um, I worked with 170 um, pre-service teachers and because these, these um, pre-service teachers work in groups of two and three, there was a total of 71 projects. So you can imagine the students are now within their own communities. Invariably, they are separated from their, their colleagues that they could possibly be working with, but they found ways and means of how they could actually communicate and some students went to live for the duration of the service learning project with their particular um, 
group members, and that's how it actually worked. So 71 projects, students in groups, and, and I think what is important here is the data get, gathering methods in terms of document analysis where the students had to keep reflective diaries. There were seminars that the students had to plan for and actually had to present. There was visual methodology as well, where the students had to make posters and videos on the work that they were doing, whether it was whether, whether it was concerned with the planning linked to the work that they were doing or the actual implementation of the work itself. And the data analysis really looking at um, content analysis with regard to what um, the three aspects are in terms of the three phases. The findings in terms of phase one, so as I'm saying to you, there are 71 projects. Um, what I did was just for the purposes of this particular presentation, I decided to focus just on two so that you could have much more of an, an understanding of what is, what is actually taking place. But in this phase one, I'm sharing the common the most common statements that the students made right at the beginning of the module where we were looking at. So what are the expectations? The fact that it has to be informative because I need to be working with them um, so that there can be construction of knowledge and skills linked to service learning and research and also an exploration of the different dynamics that can be in place and the types of work that has been done in service learning uh, by other universities in South Africa and also globally. But I think you can see that uh, for many of the students, there was confusion, they were stressed, but there was also excitement and, and there was also uh, new challenges. So among the group that we have, they, there was a difference in terms of the way in which they actually felt about it. And obviously the lockdown in 2020 brought on so many different um, aspects with regard to anxiety and stress. And when we think about the confusion as to what and how they will be of service, because service learning is something totally different to what is actually experienced in many universities. And when you think about you will be of service with, then you've got to start thinking about, OK, what could I possibly be doing with communities? And this is where um, the students and, and the work that has been done previously by previous groups of students, we look to that to look for possible examples. In phase two, what has to happen is that the, the students are in groups and they find their partners and they look at how they can work together with their particular partners. But more than that, they have to find a placement site. Now, when, when I'm talking about a placement site, really I'm talking to the fact that um, if you're going to be of service with your communities, one is looking at um, in, for last year, I said to the students they needed to go to early childhood centers. These are students who are going to be high school teachers, but they had to go to early childhood centers and they had to think of working with children who are three, four, five years old. But they also went to old age homes to go and work with the elderly. They went to community organizations or they went to special needs um, schools where they worked with um, children who had cerebral palsy. Um, so so they, they went to the quadriplegic sector where adults are in wheelchairs and they cannot move and, and actually accommodate and, and uh, actually feed themselves as well. So these are the placement sites that one is looking at. And when we think about access, it's so important that the students have to find their placement sites themselves. They have to negotiate the access themselves, but each one of them are given a letter that I frame and I give to each one of them, which explains who they are, what the purpose of the module is, and what they will intend doing within that particular placement site. They're also expected to sign a contract, and this is a service learning contract that is taken from higher education policy documents here in South Africa. So um, I'm telling you, the students are like, no, you can't expect us to do this. This is too much and whatever, whatever. But you will be surprised when during the reflection sessions, because it's over three, 13 weeks and this they do over seven weeks. 
because the first part we are teaching them, that would have been phase one. The second part we are now getting organized and it's the latter part of the five weeks or I would say six weeks and the beginning of the seven weeks where they now actually have to go into the communities. And it's amazing how the students, once they find a place where people value them and people accept them, it's like they share with everybody else. We have a WhatsApp group. We, we have the Moodle, the, the learning management site. We have emails where we communicate. And once they start sharing that, everybody wants to know, OK, so what did you do to get there? I'm also going to try it, etc. But there's also the, the whole aspect about needing enough money and data to, to obviously purchase and, and to move from one place in your community to another. But I think what was so good was that students were in their communities. They understood the different places that were present within their communities, but they did not always know the dynamics or what actually happened in each of those particular um, institutions or organizations within their communities. And what was also very important is that they had to complete 25 hours. 25 hours of service. When they decided to do it, if they decided to do it five days in a row, that was entirely up to them, but it had to be negotiated with the placement site manager. If they decided to do it over seven weeks, maybe only three or four hours every week, that was entirely up to the students. So this module is really one where the basics is presented to them, but they are the creators of everything else that needs to take place. And, and it is such an amazing experience to observe the growth of students during all of this. So if you look at the projects, what I did, <coughs> excuse me, what I did was I then grouped the projects into the types of um, topics that were being focused on. There were topics that looked at food security. There were 10. There were five projects that looked at special needs. And as I spoke about this, the special needs um, schools where the um, students went to work with children who are cerebral palsy or children who um, have special needs, depending on what those needs are. COVID related, there were four and environmentally related, for example, pollution in the harbour or looking at alien vegetation within a forested area, etc. Though there were 22 and health related, there were 30. And with regard to the health related, you can quite clearly see I've given you examples under number one, two, three, four and five examples of the types of projects linked to each of those particular categories. So in number one, enhancing nutrition and food security. Notice a lot of the food security ones are linked to the early childhood phase and getting the children to actually plant, but not just plant, but also to understand what nutrition is. And I purposely took the health related away from the food security because the food security was so focused on food per se. And health related was really focused on more of a holistic aspect linked to health, whether it was sanitation, whether it was um, the um, homeless people and uh, how the homeless people are looking at bathing, for example, brushing teeth with young children, etc. And, and you may say, so, so how did the students manage to do all this in seven weeks? Well, if, if I have to tell you that when, when you, uh, I don't strike a whip, I never strike a whip with students, but right from the beginning, we look at responsibilities and we develop um, relationships where we're looking at responsibility and accountability and the importance of them being engaged in change and who they are as individuals. So who are you as a person? And if we don't understand who you are from the outset, how can you then work with others? And then phase three is working with communities. And these are some of the general comments that were given. Working in the community is very amazing. One of the things that, that um, some of the groups learned is that promises have to be kept. When you work with students, they think that they can work with community people and just go out and say, okay, um, we've negotiated and then the, the um, 
they are told to be at a certain place at a certain time and the student decides, no, I won't go on Monday, I'll go on Tuesday at nine o'clock. And when they arrive at that community place, they are told, please leave, we do not want you here anymore. That was something really shocking for the students because they so laxy daisy. They're used to the fact that they will call the shots. You know, they will say what needs to happen. And yet they got a big awakening. And when those groups came into the reflection sessions and started sharing their experiences of how they got kicked out of the places, then it was a real awakening for other people and a warning to other students to say, if you have an access site, you have a site, a placement site, you are busy with different people, please be careful about your relationship and about keeping promises because you sign a contract. So, so can you see how that's an enabler for their professional development, even as teachers as well? And they also realize that honesty and a focus on what you're doing is essentially important and also working hard with honesty. Um, it, it, it's amazing when you think, oh, but the student should come into university having all these particular attributes, etc. No, no, some of them just do not. And we have to think as um, I don't want to say as, as the lecturer concerned, but, but really as the facilitator within this particular program, how does it all happen? And for me, it's essentially important that we work with it. OK, I'm, I'm conscious of time, but I won't go into Padlet. But what I was going to share with you is the, the posters that the students had made, and it's all on the Padlet wall. Fantastic posters. They've never, they had never made a poster using Canva.com, neither had they used used Padlet, so there were other ways in which they could be working with material and sharing the material with their own learners, but also for themselves. So there's also the skill develop development in terms of online um, learning and resources. I've just capitalized on two groups and I'm going to speak about the two groups, um, um, Tembekile and Nonduduzo and the work that they did in a grade one a class where they were looking at hygiene and healthy diet. Um, and obviously you can quite clearly see that this would fall into number one where, where they're looking at um, just food related aspects. And I want to share their, con their conclusion where they're looking at the reflection that they, they had. And this is a joint one, please for both of them. So doing service learning was amazing. This gave us an opportunity to engage with different people and to learn and explore how quickly the minds of young children are. Now, how come they didn't know that, you see? From this experience, we have learned that it is within us to do good. Isn't that wonderful? We learned that when we work together, we can achieve a lot of things. During our time at the site, one of our mentors told us that they never had time to teach the learners the importance of hygiene and living healthy. We really appreciated and enjoyed teaching young children about the importance of hygiene and living healthy. OK, oops, what happened? My, my thing is gone now. <laughs> Thanks, Anjali. Stop sharing. It's time. Stop sharing. Oh, okay. You stop me. Oh, you devil. <laughs> yes, Angela okay, is talking. I, uh, uh, Vincent, how love, to say? Scooter, I like or oh, I love. I like South Africans. I, I almost love Angela. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Toda. Okay, Hello, I'm Angela. done. <laughs> <laughs> it's suspended. <laughs> okay, I'm done then. Yes, too hot. Oh, okay, Angela, please stop sharing. <laughs> okay. What? Yeah, I'm done. Although I've still got a, I've still got a few more slides. Oh, okay. You, uh, you thanks, thanks, Angela. It's really very nice. Uh, we have first few minutes for some questions and first. Uh, uh, as a moderator, I I, I will ask, uh, I will give first question for you. Uh, you mentioned uh, that it was biological module, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was mentioned that module is or was stressful for students. 
Uh, can you explain why? OK, so it's not the module itself. It's the fact that they have to do service learning within the communities. That's what makes it stressful. And the fact that they have to decide where to go and do the service learning, they have to look at access, and then they have to go and do this work with community members. That's what makes it stressful, not the content of biological sciences. OK, thanks. OK. Yeah. Uh, I could have carried on. More questions, colleagues, please. We have two minutes. Angela, we have one question for you. Please check at uh, conversation window. Um, what content was discussed? OK, so in the biological sciences module, it's third and fourth year students. Um, the content is about research. What is research? What is the meaning of research? How do you conduct research? How, you, how do you design a research? Also service learning, what it means. How do you do service learning? But the very important thing is that the students had to work on a biologically focused um, project. And that's why the projects, if you look at the topics for the projects, they were particular um, types of topics that had to be biologically focused. Yes, from biological sciences. Thank you, Solange. OK, if uh, uh, I do not see. OK. Ah, oh, next question, please, Angela. OK, so it's called biological sciences because these are pre-service teachers and they're going to be teaching biology in the high school. So they would be taking this module um, and this is the last module in the whole program. So there's six modules in the program. They, they take this as the sixth module and all these other modules would be looking at different content, um, physiology of plants, whether it's looking at photosynthesis, whatever the case may be, would be um, linked to biology. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm done. Yes, thanks for the presentation. It's, it's really nice. And uh, uh, we have uh, next one. Uh, I think Todd is ready. Uh, we again jumping from South Africa to Republic of Belarus. And all the uh, best, Toda. Yeah, and uh, Todd, please you can start. Yes, now I'll try to share my content because from work computer we have some limitations. No, not this, uh, on the left side. Yeah, this, no, yes, this one. Yes, but now I opened and do you see some now something? No, not, not yet. Please share screen. Hmm. Now again, I will try. No. Please uh, have a Please press button share content. Oh, now. Uh, and now? Yes, we see now. Oh, finally. Thank you so much. Um, OK, uh, you see everything. Everything is OK?
uh, Vincentas. Yeah, it's okay. I'll just start from the first slide. Okay, yes, I will start from uh, the first slide. Uh, something very formal and uh, just uh, the main objective of today's work is to show you how we can how we can uh, how we can assess the structure of the course from the, in the context of effectiveness. Usually, we are saying in many in many cases we are saying about didactics, blah 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 blah. It's very effective. It's good. Uh, now we try to uh, pass you the technology, the technique proposed by Professor. Uh, TLC based on graph theory. Uh, it's uh, available both for macro and microstructure and all the course. Uh, just uh, theoretical background, just saying about mathematical technique context. This is graph theory, a uh, few formulas. <laughs> I'm not ready to discuss everything, uh, but still it works. And again, uh, this work is dedicated to our colleague. Uh, Professor Arne Tolsip, you know that he graduated from uh, from the from a mathematical faculty, but then he came uh, into chemistry and carried out a lot for chemistry education. Just a few words about theoretical background generated from chemistry visualization here history. Uh, just I said a lot about this. Uh, you know that we can visualize chemistry in different in different ways, from some ancient figures to some uh, classical Greek uh, visualization theory, atomic doctrine, then again symbolism, uh, then uh, some I don't know uh, ether level heavens, yes, alchemic uh, period and so on, and again some uh, some chemical symbolism. Just you can see that something uh, very close to S, that the ESA, again, S, ESA, again, yes, yes, yes. Just uh, we are going uh, through from uh, something uh, very material to some very symbolic. Yes, um, just when we will answer the question how to connect uh, molecular systems, um, models, to chemical education, we will find the more effective, the more effective way for didactics. Yes, atoms, substance, you know everything we can touch, we can smell, but uh, for sure when we say about educational process, uh, substance are available only in the experiment, but uh, this is material work, but we have lectures, we have practical classes and sometimes conference uh, reports. What to do in uh, uh, in such a case? Just I repeat once more the picture because I think you are bottle it. I like uh, this uh, presentation uh, from the from the animation about uh, about Alice uh, about uh, Beauty the Sleep. Yes, uh, Mother the Queen. Uh, she asked Mira Mira on the wall who is the first on the wall, yes. And uh, she was very obsessed with the idea of good presentation or good visualization and it can be visualized in different manner, yes. Just uh, something uh, very gentle. And finally, okay, uh, this is for adults. Now I am missing this slide. And the same for chemical structures, for example, for aspirin. Yes. Um, looks very realistic just when we are doing uh, molecular docking we see something like this but just here we see no functionality it's very difficult uh, to work with students with such formulas when saying about reactivity and some other formulas so different uh, techniques different models um, just when we say about the models we for sure uh, if I had uh, to our uh, to our uh plenary report i could say about philosophy principle um, yes about models in methodological didactic context but first of all this is cognitive tool it's very important for understanding of the chemistry and for sure the other disciplines okay again uh, i like i like animations so much and now alice in wonderlands uh, after they gathered some evening parties, they uh, said that 
they said about different things, everything that begins with M. And finally, about, yes, they can visualize almost everything. Mouse traps, moon memory, but when they met much of muchness, yes, it was very difficult to visualize. Uh, just the, the same about two other M's, molecular model, molecular two M's, much of muchness. Yes, you all know that molecular models uh, consist of substances as molecules, but I dare say that uh, both chemical, physical, biological objects, yes, in chemistry, they, uh, we need to add also uh, some other some other present presentations, it will be molecular representations as one more component of uh, this model system. Just I uh, will uh, show you on this example, I understand that uh, representatives of different sciences uh, now listening to me. So this is uh, the reaction uh, explaining us uh, why ethanol is so toxic. Yes, after the action of NAT, we obtain uh, ethanol that is toxic. Okay, um, uh, you don't need to answer me about the mechanism of the process. But in chemistry, we are saying about the transfer of hydride and ion and hydrogen plus, about atom transferring from one molecule to other. Yes, for me, everything is clear. In biophysics, they are saying about electron transfer. Uh, my colleagues from biology, they understand that this is the same, one hydrogen minus and one hydrogen plus, it means two electrons plus two hydrogen plus, formally, very formally, but models are very, very different. And that is why we need to choose the model that is uh, available for our discipline. Uh, okay, as for chemistry, it reflects, uh, it can be reflected in many contexts, but also we need to say not only about the structure, not about only discipline, but also about the purpose, objective of our science, and also about the didactic context. Okay, uh, just uh, the classical, the classical example uh, from the end of 19th century, but it's very popular at school nowadays, uh, the chemical test on uh, uh, on alkenes. When we add bromine water, with alkene, we see the change of the color. Yes, alkene, uh, bromine water, yes, uh, it has uh, such kind of brownish uh, color. So, know the change of color with alkenes and with alkene, we see the change uh, to uh, colorless, colorless state. Uh, this is uh, this is about substances, but we have uh, but uh, we uh, have no possibility uh, to say about all reactions in such a context uh, to describe all processes. So we need to visualize somehow, and just it was transferred uh, to so-called double bond representation instead of saturation of and saturated compound yes because it can be saturated we add something to obtain some new reality we invented the second line yes and the process of addition is possible this is a presentation for a uh, comprehensive uh, model for organic chemistry. Yes, it's uh, like uh, it's like uh, children. Um, yes, uh, they uh, they are produced for sure from their parents, and the same molecular models, our molecular presentation, uh, they are originated both from molecule and substances. Yes, from molecule, the structure. Uh, distances uh, between atoms and so on, but from substance, functionality, the ability to be changed. Yes. So, uh, just from uh, from this, we see the possibility for addition reaction. Yes, just a logical scheme, just image uh, presentation. Uh, two frogs or toads. I'm not experienced so much in biology just uh, add in some flies, yes, they are tasty, we obtain the addition product. 
Yes, and uh, finally, yes, uh, from image representation, we obtain uh, symbolic representation and addition reaction. So again, about theoretical uh, background, uh, we have invented uh, the didactic system. Just uh, it's a little bit uh, boring. Yes, we have hierarchy uh, starting from science, science, chemistry, then subject, then academic discipline, and finally course, for example, organic chemistry. And uh, for sure, this course of discipline also can be divided into uh, some private courses from different professors. And uh, to every level, every level of this hierarchy, we can find uh, the levels in didactics, theories and laws, concepts, key concepts, and uh, up to the uh, yes, uh, just uh, we were the first who invented disciplinary, who pro who, ha who have proposed uh, disciplinary didactic uh, system. Yes, uh, it was structural, structural adequacy principle, functionality, and finally, uh, mechanics uh, simplification principle. What does it mean? Uh, structural adequacy uh, principle is based on uh, some findings from science, uh, structural theory, and uh, the I said about universal model of organic chemistry, molecular representations. Um, this uh, principle is very important for core structure and for classification of organic reaction and finally for graphic uh, visualization different types of formulas uh, just uh, skeletal formulas for example they are very effective to show functionalities heat sites of molecules and for naming and so on functionality principles uh, yes it's based on the on the theory about chemical bonds and electronic effects. Uh, just again, it's very important for understanding of functionality, uh, for classification of organic compounds and so on. And finally, mechanistic simplification principle, uh, for sure it's based on scientific concept of reaction mechanism, but uh, just now I need to say that it's uh, quite different. Uh, this is uh, not uh, the pure transferring of the knowledge about uh, mechanism of reaction to didactics. It will be a little bit simplified. You will see how. Uh, just you will see that uh, this approach was uh, uh, applied uh, to assess the effectiveness of the course. Okay, just again. Uh, uh, I will regard you about uh, substitution reaction. Yes, it's very simple. Logical scheme, we substitute something. Yes, the ring with triangle. In chemical presentation, it will be the substitution of some group with the other group, yes? And now you will see it's very simple. Yes, substitution of hydrogen with bromine. Yes, bromine with OH and so on. Yes, different classes, different substances, uh, different examples but the principle is absolutely the same. Yes, the same for addition reaction. Again, you see the same scheme with frogs. Yes, again, addition is very simple. And again, the list of different reactions. And finally, more sophisticated, uh, what we said uh, about mechanistic approach for assessment of the effectiveness of the course. Uh, we proposed uh, different descriptors for different uh, elements of the reaction. Addition will be A, elimination will be E. It's uh, very close to what we uh, have uh, in uh, classical description of the mechanism of the reaction. But substitution will be the complex, will be uh, the complex uh, uh, process, addition plus elimination. We decided it will be the better for the didactic assessment. Uh, just uh, then we name the type of the reagent. Again, it uh, it will be very close to classical theory of mechanism, electrophile, electrophile and nucleophile, or the uh, particle uh, that will be eliminated from uh, from uh, the substance. Yes, electrophile or nucleophile. Then 
reaction, addition reaction to uh, elimination from carbon or heteroatom. Here H is heteroatom. And uh, finally, one and two, it means either, um, either the reaction uh, take place with uh, the atom uh, connected to, to other atoms with a single bond or to multiple bond. Uh, for us, uh, it means nothing, either it will be a double or triple bond. Yes, this is one scheme. I understand it's um, it's rather difficult for most no specialists in the field of the organic chemistry, but now you will see uh, how we give descriptors to these reactions. For example, here, uh, just this is addition, you see addition of electrophile, hydrogen plus is electrophile, to heteroatom. Heteroatoms are atoms are different from carbon and hydrogens, yes? So to heteroatom, oxygen, and finally to double bond. So yes, in few steps we will see the other reaction. For example, addition again of the electrophile to heteroatom because oxygen, and here we see with the formation of the single bond. Yes, and for example, elimination, elimination, yes, uh, from uh, elimination uh, uh, to form the particle uh, that will be nucleophile because oxygen with electron pair, then elimination from the carbon, not from the heteroatom, and uh, just we have no double bond. So, in general, hoping you understood that we uh, divided we uh, uh, we identify we identify all elementary stage as some complex uh, complex uh, processes yes according to four descriptors and just in general 16 yes it's very strange but in real only 16 processes are possible and we have decided it will be uh, it will be very effective in the assessment of uh, the continuity of the course. Okay, um, just just uh, the analogous assessment. So addition to electrophile to multiple bond and so on. Yes, something like this. And the complex the complex process from elimination and addition. Yes. So the same description of all elementary acts with descriptors something like this okay uh, the simplest way to assess the effectiveness uh, to summarize all these acts in different directions and uh, just uh, the more elementary acts we find in the reaction it will be how to say more applicable more useful uh, more descriptive in the course, more illustrative in the course. Uh, just we have analyzed one of few uh, of few manuals we use uh, when study organic chemistry. Again, this scheme, and uh, just now I remind you, yes, the descriptors, and uh, just uh, more. Sophisticated, sophisticated approach based on graph theory. Again, the reaction of acetal formation, yes, something. I understand uh, that you are not experienced in the field of organic chemistry, but use some descriptors. And now we will analyze how the different reactions are connected with each other in context of graph theory. Here you see the graph, yes, different connections, and uh, we uh, we drew, we produce the adjacency matrix. If we have connection, yes, it will be one. When we have no connection, we have zero. And based on some uh, specific uh, uh, mathematical approach, yes, we, uh, we can uh, find uh, the continuity uh, and the, other word, the continuity and uh, some the continuity of uh, the course compatibility and continuity of the course uh, yes some other actions again you see the graph theory and again mathematics yes we summarize some elements in the matrices yes 
Yes, we analyze in different reactions. And uh, for this uh, chapter analysis, for example, we have found that the most significant elementary stage for acetyl reaction is, yes, I understand you don't know what does it mean, but it's something. And it was done mathematically. It was uh, done quantitatively. Yes. Um, amino formation has the same significant value, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yes, for sure, we happen to teach the others, and for didactics, we can see that uh, our didactic uh, principles, they are connected with some key concept in uh, general didactic theory. And finally, we hope that the new didactic system will help us to create uh, a uh, new structure of the course. Uh, we can say about macro and micro structure. Macro structuring, it means macro structuring, it means uh, the uh, sequence of chapters. Uh, it means uh, the volume of chapters. When saying about micro structuring, we can say about the sub elements within the chapter. Um, the list of reactions we propose for students, the list of some facts, and so on. Just hoping you understood something. The main I wanted to show you that uh, this quantitative approach is available not only for chemistry. Uh, we can assess we can assess uh, the continuity and the compatibility of different courses, uh, but for sure. Uh, but for sure, experts in the field of uh, didactics, they should choose their own didactic system to analyze something. So thank you for attention. Now I will try to come back to you, my colleagues. Uh, now I need to finish sharing. Yeah, please stop sharing. Uh, thanks, Tadar, for your presentation. Uh, uh, you proved uh, you proved once again that chemistry is the most difficult subject. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what to do? Yeah. It's really not. But not. you succeeded when started chemistry some years ago. <laughs> Uh, colleagues, please some questions. Uh, I see, I see our next presenter, Rosalyn. Right? How to pronounce? I do not see questions. So please, if you have questions for further. I see nothing, but uh, just maybe. Um, as uh, I, I saw for previous reporters, I I saw a little bit later after you, because now I see nothing. If my colleagues are interested in the technique, in the methodology of method, um, or, or in the technique of this assessment, I can send them. Uh, some primary materials about mathematics. Okay, okay, Todor, thanks. Uh, okay, and we have, uh, okay, we are continue our, uh, our travel, travel uh, around the world, and uh, from uh, Minsk, from Belarus, we are jumping to United States, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's really a good example to jump from Belarus to the United States. It's Unfortunately, now we have no direct flights uh, because everything is closed. Uh, just <laughs> now it's very difficult. Yes, but... But, but, but in Cuban centers, you, you, you are giving us such uh, a possibility. Thank you so much. Yes, because we have this opportunity to do remotely and virtually online. Uh, okay, our next presenter from United States, University of Toledo. Uh, uh, please, you can start. Yeah, can I have two minutes, please? Yeah, no problem. We have time. Okay.
Maybe Toda can speak more about the assessment that he talks about. Toda? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You are interested in all the techniques? In, in one minute before you get shut down, very rudely. Uh, very briefly. Uh, just okay. No, no. Um. Don't say anything. Don't okay. say just. No, no, talk. no. I will. Now again, I need to share. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, two minutes. Okay, now I will try. Uh, do you see something? No. Um, okay, um, just uh, we need to create. Um, uh, do you hear me? Yeah, yes. but, yes, but I'm, uh, you, I will send it, you the primary materials. Yes, OK, but in yeah. general, we need to create the metrics. Yes, uh, just identifying whether we have connection or we have no connection. For example, the same step the same elementary act, but you can choose something else. It depends on your the supply. And then uh, we find uh, we, fi we determine uh, we determine, uh, we determine uh, two um, two units. The one is uh, the uh, compatibility. How far from the previous, for example, reaction in my case, the second reaction with the same element, uh, and uh, the continuity. Uh, whether this reaction will be after the previous one when it's based on it. Yes, but mathematical approach is based on formulas. I will send you. Yes, the articles about the mathematical technique. OK. OK, thanks, Toda. To stop sharing. Mm -hmm. OK, and next presenter, please. Okay. Sorry, it's taking some time. I just want to make sure that uh, I have the right slide. Can you guys oh. see? 
Okay, finally we see. Please, uh, full view, please. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Is that fine? Yeah, okay. First slide, please. Okay. Is that okay? Yes. Continue. Okay. Huh? Continue, please. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Rosalie, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Toledo. I'm doing my data collection and um, I just started the process of data analysis. The topic of my study is to examine, examine the use of scientific modeling, uh, scientific practices. And I'm just picking uh, one practice of scientific, mod, uh, scientific practices, which is modeling in a graduate pre-service teachers. And this study is being done in a particular course called a scientific modeling course. So for those who do not know what scientific practices are, these are the behaviors that scientists engage with when doing an, an investigation, and this helps them to perform an inquiry. Inquiry is a study that helps us to find answers to questions that are intriguing us. There are so many scientific practices, there are eight of them, and for me specifically, I chose one. The use developing and using scientific modeling. The reason why I chose this scientific practice, which is developing and using scientific model, is because the NGSS, the Next Generation Science Standards, requires that all the teachers they must be able to understand how to develop and use scientific models because this is a requirement that also students are required to know. So that is the reason that made me choose this topic. And again, um, there are so many problems that have been identified, and these problems are the ones that made me to understand that this topic was very important for me to focus on. For example, one of the problems that I was able to identify was that there are so many mom studies that have been done outside there concerning the scientific modeling. Another problem is that teachers do not have enough knowledge about developing and using scientific models. And this can be very difficult. If the teacher does not understand what he or she is supposed to teach, this can be very difficult. And at the end of the day, whatever that students are supposed to learn, they will not learn because the teacher does not know exactly what he or she is teaching. Another study that have been found that made me identify as a problem is that teachers have been found to struggle so much when engaging students with the topic of scientific models. So these are so many challenges, but uh, this is one of the problems that I identified and compressed it. Another one is that teachers do not have any experience with this scientific model. I think I can just sum up this and say that the problem is that teachers do not have enough knowledge about teaching and developing scientific models. So what has been done from the literature that I went through is that teachers, um, is that um, one of the study that uh, was identified is that, uh, is that teachers conception about scientific models before and after science course. And another one, the distinguish between scientific model and teacher models. So this is what has been done that I was able to identify from the literature. But my study 
what is missing is that teachers, we do not understand how teachers develop scientific models and use them. And at the same time, how do they teach scientific modeling? So I have something here that I propose for the teachers. What they need, they need a PCK model. PCK, for those who do not know, PCK is, stands for Pedagogical Content Knowledge. This is the knowledge of the teacher, the knowledge that the teacher uses to teach students, not the knowledge that you got from college, that you was very well, you know how to teach biology or you know how to teach chemistry. No, this is the knowledge. What knowledge do you use to engage students to be able to understand or to develop the knowledge of science in a classroom? So PCK is a tool for specialized base for the teacher. Like I said, is the knowledge base for the teacher. It's very, very important. Some teachers might know how to teach biology or chemistry well, but if they do not, they might have the knowledge of science and biology, which is the content knowledge, but they could be missing PCK, like the knowledge base, the knowledge that you use to engage students to understand the course that you're teaching. This PCK is very important because it enables students to understand the techniques that you use to uh, enable students understand what you're teaching. That is what purposely we call uh, PCK. There's a small error in the purpose of the study. I'm sorry, I wrote undergrad instead of the graduate. So it's because this study purposely previously was designed for the undergrad. That's why there's an error here that um, I, I didn't see, so I'm sorry for that. I hope you'll bear with me. So this study focuses on two aspects. One is to explore how the graduate science teachers learn about scientific models and how they learn to teach scientific modeling. So those are the two aspects of this study, how they learn scientific models, how they learn to teach scientific modeling. So. I have two questions, two broad questions. I have sub questions under there, but I did not include them. So I just picked the two main questions. So question one, what do the University of Toledo graduate teachers know about scientific modeling? And what do graduate pre-service teachers know about teaching scientific modeling? So this study is going to enable the graduate teachers be able to understand the instructions that they're supposed to use when preparing to teach a scientific model class. Also, this study is going to enable the pre-service teachers know that their PCK is very, very important when teaching scientific modeling. And also this study is going to enable the instructors and the educators to be able to understand what they're supposed to include in the instruction when preparing lessons to teach pre service teachers so that the pre-service teachers can understand how to teach scientific modeling when they go to teach in their specialized areas. So this study is employed at the University of Toledo and it, it involves a single case study. So, so and the case of my study is to understand is about service teachers learning scientific modeling and teaching scientific modeling. That is the case of my study. So the setting, I already talked about this, it's done at the University of Toledo, which is September. Um, actually, data collection has already started, but is being extended because we did not uh, get what was projected for. So it's being extended. That's why I said again, spring semester of 2021. It was done in the fall a little bit, then we continued the study to the spring of 2021. So the study engages in a convenient sampling because I'm a student at the University of Toledo, so that way it would have been easier for me. So this study has five participants. The reason why this study is prepared in this university and under this course called the Science Method course is because the pre-service teachers are introduced in other courses that prepare them to have the knowledge that they can be used to understand 
the science method course. For example, some of the science pre-service teachers, they have the knowledge of scientific model, even though not a lot of it, but they have a little bit of, they have a little bit knowledge of scientific models that they learned in their junior classes before they can prepare for this scientific modeling course. So therefore, this course expects that students, they have a minimum knowledge, they have little knowledge of understanding this scientific modeling and therefore they can also use their pedagogical content knowledge to understand the scientific modeling activity. So I have a table here and it shows what the graduate teachers will learn when they will be taught about scientific modeling. First of all, before the graduate teachers are taught about scientific model or before they're introduced into scientific modeling, they are interviewed. They are interviewed, we have the pre-interviews. So they are interviewed and their knowledge for us to understand the knowledge base of scientific modeling. So they, they are interviewed, then after the interviews, then they're introduced to the scientific modeling. So the table here that I have, uh, I have column A, B and C. So one, it shows what the graduate teachers will be taught and this shows the features of scientific models. It's very important for the graduate to understand what models are and what their features are. That way, when they come across a model, they can have this very, very important. What are the steps that graduate teachers know, need to know for them to be able to understand the process of scientific modeling? One, we have to construct a model. It's very important for the graduate teachers to learn how to construct a model. Another one, how can they use this model once you construct? How can you use this model? Number three, after you construct the model and you know how to use it, but you need to evaluate the model before you know that this model is ready, is ready to perform the work that it was meant for. Then finally, the step is revising the model. You have to revise the model and be able to understand, to know that, yes, I have this model. I designed to teach this class or I designed to teach this specific topic. So is this model really ready? I mean, am I ready to teach using this model? Is the model specifically made for this course? Then see, I have the phases of MBI. That one is called modeling based inquiry those are the phases now c is teaching scientific modeling a and b that is knowledge understanding the knowledge of scientific modeling once the teachers understand the the knowledge of scientific modeling now they need to understand how to teach scientific modeling so three there are four phases one is planning for engagement with important science ideas so this is preparing to teach, getting ready to teach the students, preparing, going through the lesson, going through the, uh, the, the, the next generation standards and see all the requirements for that specific class that you are teaching and put them down and be able to understand how this is being introduced to class. So the next step is eliciting students' idea. When you go to class, you suppose the teachers are supposed to elicit students' ideas. Elicit, you just like, you can ask them a question and you follow with a question, with another question, not just to give students answers. That way, when you give students answers, they don't, like, they don't learn what they're supposed to learn. Then another stage is supporting ongoing students' changes in thinking. This one is supporting them. When they ask a question, you also have to ask a question to challenge them. So that way you support their thinking until they arrive to the expected answer. Then pressing for evidence-based explanation for students. If a student answers a question, for example, in chemistry, uh, you ask them, why do you think when you react, for example, when you react, um, uh, when you react, what do we call hydrochloric acid, you react with sodium. So you say you find sodium chloride. So students are supposed to explain what makes you think when you react, um, sorry, what, 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 why do you think that when you react sodium with chlorine, you get sodium chloride? 
and students have to explain where sodium chloride comes from. And they are able to give you an example of sodium chloride. So where have they seen this sodium chloride? So it is pressing for evidence based explanation. So in this table here, again, it shows the term, um, the phases of MBI that we talked about, we just talked about how they taught how to design a scientific model. They are taught how to identify big scientific ideas. They can identify these from the, the, the textbook. They can identify these from multiple sources to ensure that they have the they have the materials that are needed for class. I already talked about eliciting students' ideas and supporting ongoing, and as well as pressing students for evidence based. This all is what I talked previously a few minutes ago, and that's what I have. So the data collection, I already talked about the pre-interviews. We have the pre-interviews and the post-interviews at the end. Also, observation is done, and also there's an activity, scientific modeling activity that the graduate teachers are supposed to complete and be able to submit to the researcher. So these are the issues that I'll be asking the graduate teachers. I have uh, 11 questions. And this table here is question one. So question one, this is going to let me answer my questions. So this is not that necessary. Question two, teaching scientific modeling. So this also will help me uh, be able to get what I need. And now I talked about the PCK, the component of PCK, pedagogical content knowledge. In the beginning, I talked about the model that the graduate teachers need to know on teaching scientific modeling. And I have a model here that has five components. One is orientation to teaching science. So this orientation to teaching science, this, the teachers are supposed to understand or to be able to understand the value of using scientific models in class. Once the teachers understand the value of using the, the scientific model, then they're in a better position to be able to move to the next model. So the next model is thinking about science, students thinking about science. So you engage students, that way students can be thinking about science and how can they you infuse this scientific model for them to be able to understand scientific model. Another model is the knowledge of science curriculum. So the teachers are supposed to understand scientific modeling. That way they show the patterns of these scientific models. It helps also to find the relationship between PCK and scientific modeling. PCK is the whole component that I have on this slide. How can you infuse this PCK while teaching scientific modeling? Very, very important. Another model is the knowledge of instruction strategies in science. There are phases of MBI that I talked about, which is preparing for engagement, eliciting students' ideas, supporting ongoing changes. All these phases are very, very important for a teacher. So the teacher is supposed to know these phases. Then at the end, we have the knowledge of assessment, the knowledge that the teachers use to assess students, to understand if their students are doing well, if the students are understanding what's scientific, scientific models are and how they are used. So you have to, the teachers are supposed to develop knowledge of assessment. What criteria are you going to, to be looking at for you to assess these students? For example, the teacher might be able to say, oh, I'm going to use the criteria of constructing, using, evaluating, revising, or I'm going to use uh, features of scientific models, or I'm going to use the phases of modeling based inquiry. This is a research question too. This is just a framework of PCK, what they need to talk about, what I just talked in this um, slide. So that's what I have here. And now when graduate teachers be taught, they'll be given a scientific model. <coughs> Excuse me. And a scientific model here, I have a periodic table. So they'll be given the periodic table and they'll be engaged, engaging with uh, the periodic table and they'll be able to learn. The teacher will be engaging them and asking them questions. They'll be discussing with other class students to be able to understand the knowledge of scientific model. 
So this is another model, the process of photosynthesis. So this is another model that will be used in that study. This is another model, the process of digestion. It express this is another scientific model. And here I have the process of absorption. That is an endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. This is another model that the graduate teachers will be engaged with. So the analysis, we have coding and other processes. So, and I have the last slide that I did not include here, which is of the preliminary data that I have about the graduate teachers. Uh, some of the graduate teachers that I have interviewed and analyzed their data is that they have, I can say they have a knowledge, a little knowledge of developing, of using scientific model, but not developing scientific model. Most of them, you ask them, what do you know about scientific modeling? They say, uh, I have used a scientific model in my ecology class, in my chemistry class to teach, um, to teach evolution or to teach atoms. So they have a little bit of knowledge of scientific model. Another graduate teacher that I, I interviewed said that um, she like use the model when teaching mathematics. Oh, so this study expects that at the end, the graduate teachers are going to develop a well-defined knowledge of developing scientific models and using scientific models in their classrooms. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank wow, you I so know. much. Did I, did I go missing? No, 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 no. you are not missing yeah. at all. Thank you for your I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. <laughs> But I went missing, so I was saying. No, thank it looks, you. looks like Vincentus is missing. Huh? Vincentus looks like he's missing. What do you say, Mrs? Vincentus looks like he is missing. That's why it was so quiet. We were waiting for him to talk. Oh, uh, okay. Hello, I am here. I am here. Do you listen, uh, hear me? Yes, I hear you very well. Uh, yes, sorry, for, sorry, as was predicted, uh, electricity disappeared for, I don't know, at the end of the day because it's very, very hot. Sorry about that. Yeah, and we tried to connect uh, with, with uh, another computer and uh, iPhone and finally I am here again. Okay. Let's continue. Oh, you want me to go back? No, no, just continue your presentation. I finished. She finished. Oh, you finished, fine. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe do you want me to talk about it a little bit? No, no, uh, if you finished, it's okay. Uh, please stop sharing. I can talk about it a little bit if you want. <laughs> no, I, I didn't lost control. Everything is under control. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not under control. Oh my. Yes, but it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. We're 35 right now. And it's, uh, I don't know, maybe for 10 or 15 minutes uh, we are without electricity. In, yeah. in approximately in whole city, not happens yes. yeah, any, any questions yeah I, I already uh, text that questions to you huh? uh, do we have colleague from Malaysia?
do we have colleague Lei from Malaysia or not? Not. Okay, if not, uh, uh, Solange, are you with us? Hi, I'm here. Okay, and uh, another colleague from Brazil. Now it's my turn, no? It's not, but uh, I do not <coughs> Our colleague from uh, from Malaysia. Okay. Ah, Mikhail, Mikhail is here, yeah. And Mikhail, I think he's here. Yeah, he is here. Uh, uh, he can continue instead of uh, Malaysian colleague. And uh, later on, we will reverse. No problem. Hello. Okay. Hello, what do you prefer, Mikhail's or me? Oh, please decide among you. <laughs> oh, okay. Democracy. Can, democracy. Can I you, can, can you go? be the first. Okay. Yes, you can, you can. Can you go first? Okay. Okay. Uh, this is my first presentation in English. I just a little nervous. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> Feel comfortable, no problems. Uh -huh. The slide is appeared to you. Yes, we can see. Okay. My my presentation is Challenge for Teaching Education in Pandemic Times. And after the review, the title will be Challenge for Prestef Physics Teacher Education in a Northwest Brazilian State in Pandemic Times. My name is Micaías Rodrigues. I'm a faculty member of Federal University of Piauí, Brazil. Uh, pandemic and social isolation. By the end of uh, 2019, COVID-19 had rapidly spread to China and thus to the rest of the world. A Brazilian federal law set out the measures that could be taken because of the coronavirus. Piauí, the third Brazilian state with the lowest HDA published a decree which determined the suspension of class in the state public network and the other decree determined isol a social isolation. Uh, and uh, after this, the classes were offered by remote mode. Okay. I will take about the teacher education of undergraduate students. Supervised internship is a supervised school educational act developed in work environment. It's part of the pedagogical projects of the course and aims the learning competence proper to the professional activity and the curricular context in supervised internship, the preceptive teacher performed observation and conducting activities. 
Uh, it's occurred in the second half of the course. In addition to the supervised internship, there is another possibility for the training of future teachers in loco, the pedagogical residence program. The residence program is one of the actions that integrate the national policy for teacher training and the aims to induce the improvement of practical training in undergraduate course, promoting the immersion of the students in the basic education school. As in supervised internship, in the pedagogical residence, the preserved teacher carry out observation and teaching activities. This program is to students uh, in the second half of this course too. And the teaching offered today in schools in pandemic time in Brazil, in Piauí, okay? Uh, the private schools, there is a hybrid, hybrid teaching. Students follow what happens at school from home in full time. In public schools, schools there is a remote teaching, remote teaching using live or with WhatsApp or with delivery of printed material. Students mostly access to internet through smartphones and have difficulty to access it. Most public schools read a remote le learning and work through WhatsApp. And this emerged my research question. How to work on the training of future teachers immersed in the current situation? The methodology of the, this research. In this research, there were 20 enrolled students in supervised internship disciplines and 24 students who were involved in pedagogical residency activities. There were three schools that had uh, pedagogical residency students inserted and eight schools in which the interns uh, were inserted. The data produced was obtained through the oral reports of preserved teacher and or supervising professors to uh, supervise the internship and preceptors to pedagogical residence. And through uh, reports produced by the preserved teacher of the reports uh, in the end of the activities of supervised internship and pedagogical residence too. So after the data analysis, some possibilities for training of preserved physics teachers were listed. One of them is the use of digital platform, platform ANP, Zoom, Google Meet, the teacher, the insert teacher O or the preserved teacher present the content and the students watch remotely in real time. Few public schools use this though to the difficult students have to access to internet. Simulators was where the other possibilities the physics is an experimental science. As teaching has taken place remotely, simulators proved to be interesting tools. In a part of this, it's necessary to program, and for example, Python, Scratch, Breaker. The professor put the comments in the programmation of this simulator. And another 
are ready for use. Has uh, física em mãos, FET, virtual lab, etc. Aí, they preserve, oh, they preserve or inserve teacher present the simulator by platforms in synchronous uh, activities or sharing his link via WhatsApp in asynchronous activities. Okay. And other possibility is gamification. Gamification is interesting as it motivation motivates students who are bored with remote activities, helping to reduce dropout. The dropout is very expressive in public schools at Brazilian reality. The following tools were used. Google Forms, Kahoot, Quizlet, Quizzes, Mentimeter. Mentimeter is known, known by uh, Word Cloud, the, the last figure at the right, the under the right side. And the other possibilities were social networks and memes. The students use the social networks all the time. So this can be a good way to shape scientific knowledge. The insert or preserved teacher post something in the social network and is the students look at this and can uh, learn something. The memes had used humor and generate questions about different contexts, facilitating the teaching. The, there is a, a meme in the right side, the under the right side, and the other social networks are used by students in super ed internship or pedagogical residence. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. The conclusions and implications of the research, the super ed internship and pedagogical residence enable the insertion to reality in the correct context. Remote or hybrid teaching presents a wide range of possibilities for teaching act action. It's needed for learning, using new information and communication technologies. And the preserved teacher were able to assist in the recycling training of inserted teacher and in motivation of the students. There is there are some references used in this presentation. Thank you. And my email. Uh, thanks a lot. <clears throat> Colleagues, if you have questions, please. I see no questions. Okay. Nobody wants to ask. Good presentation. Okay, if no questions, uh, we can move to the next presenter. Solange, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Solange, please start. Okay, hello, Vincentos, how are you? <laughs> oh. Thank you. <laughs> <It's> Fine. <laughs> 
Good. Oh, yes, it's a pleasure to be here and see some friends and have the opportunity to share knowledge. So let's get started. Let's start my presentation here. Here we go. Okay. Please see if you are seeing. No. Um, oh, it's uh, yeah. Okay. Now, can you see the presentation? Yes, we see, but not in full view. Wait a minute, because I've got some problem here. Yeah. I think all of us. We have some problems. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. <laughs> now this unpredictable life. Yeah. And now I think it's okay. Yes. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we see, but you can you turn on full view? Okay, so you can see my my slide. Yes, right. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, so, as I was saying, I, it's a pleasure being here, and I'm from University of ABC, located in São Paulo, Brazil. I've been working here as a researcher and teacher. Uh, well, today um, I'll bring you some ideas about using drawings to teach and learn science. Considering the editorial I'm writing uh, to the problems, usually uh, we think about uh, using drawings only with children, but you can also use them with adults as one of the many strategies as you can you consider. I've used it with my students at university and it's very good. It has been very good, actually. Uh, well, I'm from Brazil as Micaias and Aguinaldo. And of course, I couldn't stop talking about the difficult times we are living and how much denial is in science can be harmful to our lives. As Aguinaldo said earlier, about our situation here due to the, to the president we have at this moment, half of million deaths. In addition to not helping, he contributes to aggravate the critical situation. That's it. It's, that, it's just a, a little bit about what's happening here. But okay, we are here to talk about the research and let's move forward. That said, I congratulate Vincentas and everyone in the organization for bringing science to those who can participate right now at home, at work. Well, let's get started. So, why using drawings to learn science? This is a good question, isn't it? Because uh, maybe it's good or not good. What do you think? Well, According to these authors, these three authors, using drawing to teach and learn science can make students engage in the process. This is the first thing. Even if they are adults, allow them to represent models in science. That's very absolutely important in science. We have to represent the phenomena uh, they are experiencing. And they also can communicate and to reason about that, um, which is very important to skill in science teaching. And I'd add that could be a way for students to rethink, revise, and reconstruct their ideas. And why metacognition, I think, could be included. How long is it? The last one, yes. Is the only the first slide up here? Oh, really? Oh, let, let me see. Um, and now? The third. And now? The third is up here. 
appearing. What do you see now? Uh, why which? using drawing? Oh, why using science? drawing to learn science? Okay, that's correct. Yes. Now it. Uh, now I think it's working. Okay. Well. Uh, everything has stopped. I don't listen nothing. Yes, so I, hear, I hear nothing also. Oh, uh, I come back. Oh, yes, you are coming back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll try again. Let me see. I'm going to share with you here. Okay, share. Now, yes. can you see my presentation? Yes. A concept map. Yes? Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. And let's get started again. Uh, here, I, uh, there's a model where I relate metacognition to visualization that I call meta visualization because it's related to images. Visualization can, can be an internal representation that someone has of an image that is stored in their mind. Something is here, but that's not necessarily static, of course. I can rethink this image and that I've stored and changed it in the sense of fitting it, adding information or what else. A very simple example so that we can better understand how could this works. If I ask you right now to imagine the representation of a hydrogen molecule, for sure everyone here would have an image of this representation. For example, this one, oops, here, this one could be a representation, but uh, you could think, no, there's something wrong, something off. And this time you are trying to reconstruct your idea and uh, then review your image and reconstruct this image of a most suitable way. Let's see. Oh, this is right. This is better. So in the beginning, you are thinking about isolated atoms, actually not molecules. Now that these atoms are put together, so they are forming a molecule. Of course, this is a basic, very basic as an example, but it's how it can work. You can reconstruct your ideas. So, see Vincentas, chemistry is so nice, isn't it? Just a, 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 an example. Well, just kidding, of course. Speaking of chemistry, an example here of a research in which we used drawings for students to review their concepts. Uh, using meta visualization to revise an explanatory model regarding a chemical reaction between ions. I wrote this article with my colleague, Betty Davidovitz. Well, the objective of this work was to evaluate the implementation of a meta visual strategy using drawings for students to revise and self-regulate concepts arising in a study of a chemical reaction between ions. So, for this pur purpose, two chemistry education undergraduate students at a Brazilian public university where I work carried out an investigative activity involving mere visual steps to revise explanatory models at the submicro level. Students receive two pots containing soil and a small amount of fertilizer with potassium chloride just in one of them. And they had to find out was, 
was where the fertilizer was. What they, they, what they did, they added water to the, the two pots, adding silver ions to them and observed the formation of precipitate in only one of them. This is here, B1. And so, this is the part of the, the using of the drawings because students had to, to imagine it and construct an explanatory model of the student level for the initial on the left and the final stage on the right of the reaction. And so, this is a representation made by a pair of students. So, as can be seen here, they had now to compare their clay model with an example of a scientifically correct figure of the submarine level. So this is why I was saying about the drawings because here, because here I'm using the drawing for them to compare what they did, what I'm presenting to them. As can be seen, some concepts were revised by the students here, because here is the beginning, here is the, the end of their model. Uh, some concepts were revised by them and some not, showing that they saw in the drawing at the time of comparison was important for them to learn chemistry, but they need some help sometimes. As an example of a review made by them, Note that ions are now separated in aqueous solution. See, it's very different. They now consider water. They even drew the, the water, it's very beautiful. And consider the ions separated is correct. And it is what will allow the reaction between two of them. Because if they are together, they can't react. On the other hand, it's observed that the silver chloride is misrepresented since we have one chloride for silver ion and not two as they represented here. It's not correct. So they need some help to revise this concept that they didn't get it. That's very interesting. So the findings reveal evidence of self-regulation of mental models at the submarine level. From the interaction of prior knowledge with they had, chemical diagrams and discussions and reflections by the pair of students. And you can use uh, only drawings instead of a plain, as I did here. It works as well. It's very interesting. Difficult regarding chemical formulae were also observed, like I said. They didn't get the, 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 the real formula for the chloride silver. So this reveals the importance of the teacher mediation uh, during the process, because in part, the students may be able to review them themselves, but some concepts, they may face greater difficulty as we, as we saw in which case the teacher will be able to help them to overcome this kind of difficulties. Finally, there are implications for teaching chemistry. Since teachers in training need to experience Meravigio strategies for future application in their classroom. Uh, as a possibility, as any other ones you can think about. Well, even in the face of the challenge described, the drawing, can be an excellent opportunity to learn science, as that three authors said, enabling the review of scientific concepts that's really desirable for us as a teachers. Here uh, I got some reference if you if you want to read about and to, to understand more. And thank you for for listening here the presentation. That's it. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. Just, just stop, stop sharing. Yeah.
I'm trying to do it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Here am I. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hello, <come on. laughs> Imagine I were in Lithuania two years ago. So I see this picture behind you, Vincentas, and I remember that, oh, this is... Now we are so far, everyone here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, this is, uh, uh, you see the same picture, golden boy. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and the place is very, very nice. I invite everyone here to come to, to go to Lithuania two, two years in the uh, future. I'm not coming to Brazil. Why <laughs> ask me? Okay, any questions? Angela, are you saying something? <laughs> yeah, what about coming to Brazil for IOSP? Oh, yes, IOS uh, next year, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, IOSP in Brazil, please come here, people. <laughs> okay. okay, we will try, but you know that it's life, uh, our life is unpredictable, really, because. Yeah. Uh, I remember last year uh, during visit uh, in Durban in South Africa, I asked Angela before my visit, I asked Angela, what about COVID in, in, uh, in South Africa? And she started to laugh. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Angela, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Maybe a question well, we, about we, visualization. We were safe at that time. We oh, were yeah. safe at that time. Yeah. Yes, but when we returned back, if I remember, it was the 23rd, uh, 23rd of uh, February. And the general yeah. after one week. Uh, Not one week. Two weeks. Okay. Um, um, I see IOSTI 2024. I think South Africa is putting in a bid for that, our university. So, I don't know. Okay, we'll talk. Thank you. Salan. Yeah? I'm, I'm very impressed with the number of articles you've got there. Yes, about drawings. Yes, absolutely. I think that is so interesting. And my colleague, Angela, is from South Africa. Betty Davidovitz is from yes. Cape Town City. Yes, a lovely woman, Betty Davidovitz. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, colleagues, uh, just to check, uh, do we have colleague from Malaysia? No, no I, uh, maybe not. It's, it would be the last presentation, but uh, I sent some emails uh, one hour ago and nobody answering. So we end. We have time uh, according to our program. Uh, if if somebody wants to 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 discuss or to raise a discussion or or, or to summarize something because. Uh, somehow we finished for today, except one presentation from Malaysia. It's a pity, of course, without any information from the colleague. Yeah, but uh, anyway, it's, it's it was a relatively good day, I think. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Very good, yeah. But in general, I think it's a great success for such a uh, conference online that uh, most of participants who have been registered today were present and able to speak, to answer the questions. And uh, really, I think it's really a very great success. Oh, yeah. yes, sure. Uh, except Solange, because uh, she missed uh, the deadline for registration. Oh, yes. So <laughs> That's real. I'm sorry, yes, yes. No, I didn't miss. Actually, I thought I had 
done. But uh, yes, yeah. just no, Salan, you, you didn't miss because you presented. So it's okay. All good. All good. Thank you, Angela, for saving oh, me. Thank you. Trust, trust <laughs> him to say the negative. Yes, always under control. I, I said, I said only first part. And my second part of this message is that we managed with Solange. I remind reminded to her that she need to be here with us, and uh, <laughs> she was found in Brazil. Yes, based on that, I can conclude that everything is under control. <laughs> Always, <laughs> even though there's no electricity in Charlotte. Yeah. OK. What about the electricity today? Sorry just, sorry, just for 15 minutes. Now it's uh, electricity returned back. Everything is all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's really hot and it never happened. I, I don't remember for last 10 years, maybe. <laughs> oh my God. It's something really is, um, unbelievable. That 2016 was the same, Vincentus. Five years ago, it was the same. Very, very uh, hot. Maybe, maybe not in June, maybe in July, but uh, it was a very, very hot summer five years ago. Um, yeah, but uh, currently, for example, I am checking we have around 35. <laughs> it's it's not common for us. 35? Yeah, 30, 34, 35 right now. Officially? Yes. It's it's really really too hot. Uh, it's not common uh, for us in Lithuania. But, but we are still alive, and our COVID microbial partners think uh, I think they will be killed <laughs> with the hot, dry weather. They don't like. Oh yeah, sure. Such an environment. Yeah, we uh, our government. Uh, uh, maybe we'll finish quarantine, official quarantine uh, next week. Okay. Uh, so just, I received, uh, just I received the mail from company, from electricity company, that everything was corrected. Yeah, they're, they're working quite fast, but it, it's unbelievable again it happened. But not only in full, not in full city, in some parts. Yeah, in some parts. Well, now you know what it feels like in South Africa to have two hours without electricity for load shedding. Yes, we have, uh... I'm sorry to hear about that. Yes, I know that. Two hours per day, isn't it? Two hours, but not now. We have it at certain times. Last yeah. was last week or the week before we had it every day for two hours and then the one day for four hours, two hours now, another eight hours later, another two hours. You can't work properly. Hmm. OK, do we have some? Okay. One more Done comment. Now. What is about about what about the hairstyle? Oh my lord! <laughs> you know, first is the invitation to the STEAM conference in Lisbon, Portugal, next in months, and the secondly, it's the new uh, hairstyle for do from Dr. James. It's not a new hairstyle. <laughs> my hair is just long now. That's all. Different color. It's blown. Oh, oh, yeah, you saw that. Yeah, it was my birthday. I had to look good for my birthday. Show oh. the new color of your hair.